Welcome everyone to Get Your Game On, the channel dedicated to immersive gaming. And here we go. I am uh, I'm getting everything working. So hopefully y'all see me here. And we do. Joe, Joe is here. Joe is going to be handling the chat. And uh, I have been looking so forward to this live stream. So um, I had to get OBS started. So let me get into VR and then we can get caught up. So uh, all right. So you see me, Joe? Everything looks good? Everything looks good. Excellent. Well, thank you for being willing to handle the chat. As you know, in VR, I can't really see the chat very well because um, right. I haven't found a good solution for that yet. So so here we are, DCS. And uh, you haven't played a lot of this yet, have you? I'm sorry. I was checking the audio on the stream. Say that oh, okay. Time. You haven't played a lot of DCS, have you? I have played zero DCS. <laughs> okay. Well, this, this is, for those of you that are like Joe and are not familiar with this, this is my absolute favorite flight simulator. Um, I love combat. I love naval operations with carrier landings. And this was the game that basically was the reason I bought the motion platform. I mean, I there were a lot of things I wanted to do with it. But this was the game that I thought, boy, if <clears throat> if I can get motion in this, I am going to be happy. Because the, the first time I tried VR in this, that was actually with the old Oculus DK2. <clears throat> it, it just floored me. And it just keeps getting better and better. So, so this is basically um, what DCS is, is. is a flight or study level aircraft. So basically you get in these aircraft and, and each aircraft is purchased separately. And so I have um, the F-14, which you see here. And I also have the Apache, uh, which Jeff and I have talked about flying. And then we're obviously going to be talking about the F-18 which is what I'm flying today. But you can see here, we've got um, a Tiger F F-15, Sabre, I mean, there's so many. So um, if you're into aircraft, this is an awesome, awesome uh, thing. So anyhow, so the way this works, Joe, is basically I've created some missions over the years, and so we're just gonna kinda have some fun today. And I may crash, I will likely crash. I may get shot down, I'll likely get shot down. And uh, there's going to be all kinds of mishaps, but we're just going to kind of enjoy it. And, uh, you know, feel free to judge me as you wish. <laughs> I will tell you now, I'm not a former pilot. Um, I probably do a lot of things wrong in the aircraft, but, you know, who cares? It's for me. So, all right. So we're going to just do some simple stuff um, to start off with. So I'm going to go ahead and start this mission up. And you will see, hopefully, the uh, this is an... DLF Reality H6, and hopefully you'll get a good sense of what the movement is in one of these. So this is a kind of a, a I don't know, this was kind of a fun mission. This I, this harkened back to my race car routes, and what I did was I designed a route. Um, it's in the Middle East. It flies through like Abu Dhabi and all that stuff, and what I did was set kind of a course, um, and I set for myself a goal or a challenge to basically fly the course at 100% afterburner, all the way and without ever going over 500 feet altitude until I get to the mountains. So we're going to basically buzz through the cities. We're going to buzz across the desert, kind of doing the Top Gun Maverick kind of thing, trying to get low. Um, we're going to dice in and out of buildings. And, oh, yeah, we're doing it at sunset. So by the time I get to the carrier, it will likely be getting dark. So we're going to try to land on the carrier at the end. So the idea is to buzz full afterburner through the city. I've got to cut back and traverse through the mountains a little bit. If I survive all that, then we basically hit the peninsula, and I uh, I do a steep climb, and I do have a tanker. So I've got an a, a uh, KC-135 tanker, I think it is. Uh, what do I got? Uh, okay, KC-130. So I've got a KC-130 ready to tank me because I will be almost out of fuel by that point. And I'll fuel up. And then we'll boogie to the carrier and try to land on the carrier. That's the idea. Whether it happens or not, we will see. <laughs> so wow. So here you go. So um, so let's get started. And so this is how this works. So hopefully everything looks good. Um, I tried to mess with smoothing and everything. Hopefully you have a good visual of what I'm seeing. So I am now sitting in an F-18, and I can tell you in um, in the headset it looks real. So this is what we got. We're we're at an uh, Aldafra Air Force Base, and so this is the 
the uh, plane will be flying today. And as you may have noticed, it's not doing anything. So this being a steady level aircraft, that means all these switches and buttons are active, or most of them. I'd say 95% of them. There might be a few that aren't, but um, there's plenty to learn. So I guess we got to start it up. Joe, tell, walk me through the instructions. How do I get this thing to start? Uh, hit the start button. <laughs> I, I can't find the key. So anyways... Oh. I thought you all had right. The keys inserted. I mean, come on, man. All right, all right. Let me see if I can get this thing started. So right now, this is called cold and dark. Um, that's the situation we're in. So uh, I'm probably not going to do this according to the procedures that are natops, but I'm going to try to get as close as I can. So we'll go through this. So the very first thing we got to do, is, first thing you're supposed to do is do a visual check that all the the uh, switches and stuff are where they're supposed to be. In a real jet, in this, we know they are because we just started the sim. So what we're going to do first is we turn on the battery. Actually, we can check the battery. So that's the battery. And you'll see there's a little battery indicator. You want to make sure we got power to the battery. And once we do that, nobody ever does this, but the official method is you come up here to this fire uh, test method, and we're going to make the plane go through its checks. So we're going to test. We're going to check the Engine B circuit. And this is just left. a... A uh, startup right. procedure to make APU sure everything fire. works. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. So that's how that works. So yeah. how are you? How are you? How are you negotiating your pointer inside the the virtual cockpit? How do you so, do this? See system? this hand. The way I do it, and I like it a lot, is I have basically a mouse pad. It's basically like your trackpad you'd find on a laptop. Um, and so I, it's a touchpad, kind of like a laptop. And I have, and with this new version, I lose the, they changed the cursor to black, which means it's really easy to lose it. So you see that little crosshair there? So as I move my finger on the, on the pad, I, uh, I'm moving that little crosshair. I don't know if you can see that crosshair or not. It's kind of right down by the foot I pedal. See it. Yeah. Yes. So you move that over here. And what's cool is, depending on which button you switch Engine or you hold. Um, it flips the left. switch either up or down. Engine so right. so that's, right. that's what's really cool. And I really like using APU this. Um, the APU other fire. thing you'll see, I'll use the dials. And for dials, I can left. actually scroll by using my Lead two fingers right. on it. And it'll Lead scroll and you'll right. see that. So there we go. So we know we're checked there. All right. So once we do that, now that also shut off the air bleed. So I've got to reset that once we get started. Um, so we're going to come over here and we're going to turn on the APU. Auxiliary power unit, that's what's going to fire it up. This is a small turbine motor that actually allows you to start the actual motors. So we got to let that spool up. The other thing I'm going to do real quick, can you hear me okay over the uh, jet? It's getting loud. <laughs> um, all right, you're not hearing the jet? Hold on a second. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's really loud in my headset. All right, give me one second. Let me go back. All right, let me make sure. Okay, you're yeah, so you're not here. Okay, it's Okay. Well, you might want to check cuz it's pretty loud right now. Hopefully I'm not drowning out. So, we're good? All right. Oh, out it. Hold on. When I come out a window, I got to get back. To DCS. There we go. All right. So now we got our APU started. Now one of the things that I like to do is I like to get this. Your navigation um, takes the longest to calibrate, so I always turn that on right away. And then I also go ahead and flip my dials on. Um, so I'm going to turn that to daily. Uh, right now we don't have a generator going yet. And watch, if, you, if I use these two fingers, you can see I'm actually scrolling the dial and turning the brightness up. And i got to do the same with the HUD. So i got a HUD. You can see I'm basically turning on the brightness. All right, so now that the APU is going, we want to start an engine. And we're going to go ahead and crank the right engine. So I hit that. And if you watch the IFE, which is the little um, fuel meter here, you can see that it's coming up to 20. Once it hits 20, I'm going to push my throttle slightly forward out of the off position, and I'm going to introduce fuel into the combustion chamber. So we're going to go ahead and put that. You'll see the stick move. 
and then you're going to see temperature come up in the right engine. So you see we got the right engine coming up and it's going to start firing up. So you'll actually hear it change. Now it's starting her up. And there we go. Generator came on. So you can see everything's kind of lighting up. You're going to see all the panels come on in just a second. It's going through its auto check system. There you go. You can see everything's warming up. We've got the HUD now. And this will pop up in a second. All right. So now we're getting everything. Now, a little trick in this, if you don't want to wait for five minutes for your for your uh, navigation to set, you can hit the storage heading and it'll cut down the time to do everything. All right, so it's getting loud, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the canopy. You can see the canopy coming down. And that should make it a little more pleasant. There we go. Hey, now can you hear me, Joe? <laughs> hang on, I, I, I can hear you, I can hear you before, hang on. I'm gonna do an audio check on the screen here. The All right, the screen. okay. It should be much more pleasant. All right, so we got that. Let me know when we got sound checks are good. Got that. We got. So we got the other motor we're ready to turn on. Sound check for good. You're okay. Screen, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to do the exact same process with the left motor. So we're going to go left motor, and we're going to watch for the RPM to spin up to about 20. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to go to F2. Let's see here, so I can so you can see an outside view. Let's spin around the back, so you can see one engine's lit, one is not. So what I'm going to do now is introduce the fuel to it, and you're going to see that open up. You see that open up to match the other one. So there we go. So there's, that's that. So we got our motors up. So we got left engine, right engine are up and running. And now let's go ahead and check. Let's see what we got. Um, so we want to go to our uh, flight control system, FCS. And so you'll notice here you want to make sure you don't have any X's in your flight control system. Got a slight problem. We have X's. So we got to clear those cautions before we are safe to take off. So what we're going to do for that is we just simply come over here and we're going to click this flight control reset button. And you see that clears all that stuff out. So that's good. Um, the other thing we can do is we can actually do a test to check our control surfaces. So what I do is I actually hold this reset button down and I come over here and there's a switch. Let's see if I can get it. And I think I took too long. Let me try it again. Okay, reset and switch. There we go. Now you see the plane will start doing um, going to start going through some checks you'll see it flex so it's going through all its its movements which is kind of cool oh wait a minute what's that you said you'd see it do what you see the wings flexing i don't know if you can see it the wings were like flexing and going through all their movements and contortions so that's just kind of a check um you do that on a cold day typically just to make sure everything's good all right, so let's go through and start getting this thing ready. So um, what we're looking for here, I'm going to turn this map off. Um, we're looking for this to say OK, and it does. So that means we can, we can now move our um, navigation to internal. So now we're good there. Um, then we're going to work through here and then go through and make sure everything's good. So I'm going to uncage my backup um, attitude indicator. So we're good there. Um, and then this right here is the low altitude warning. So you set a time or an altitude that you want it to give you an alert. And so we're going to be doing low level flight. So we're going to do about 50. So when I'm 50 feet or lower, it's going to start doing that beep, beep. And that's just to tell me to pull my head out. Okay, um, Master Caution. Okay. Um, so we got that, we got that. We can turn our uh, chaff dispenser on. We're not planning on combat, but we'll turn that on. We got our uh, radar warning system. We'll turn that on. Um, what else we got here, Joe? Let's see, I think we're good there. Now, I mentioned the bleed air, so I got to do the bleed air real quick. So, the way the bleed air works is I have to rotate this bleed air switch. 
360, and then you can almost hear, you can hear the sound of the air starting to flow. So we got the bleed air, so that's good. Um, check seat, so that's telling me to make sure that I've got my seat um, armed. So that's the injection seat right there. So now the seat is armed. So now you can see we've pretty much got um, all of the cautions are cleared. All right, so the one thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set, we have tanks on this. We have through three auxiliary fuel tanks. As soon as those are empty, we wanna dump them to lose the drag and the weight. So I'm gonna set that up now. This is not copacetic. You should not arm your stuff before you take off, but I don't care. I'm setting it anyways. Um, we are on the field, so we're going to hit the field bypass and see flaps we're going to put on half for takeoff. And while we're doing our takeoff, I'm going to go ahead and set the trim. So takeoff trim is set and you can see that's 12 on the stabilizer. So that's, that's the correct tr takeoff trim. Not going to worry about lights right now. You can see that our APU has turned off automatically, which is good. Um, we're going to work our way back. And then the other big thing is oxygen want to turn your oxygen on otherwise you will pass out when you get too high of an altitude so real quick just doing a visual scan around the cockpit make sure I think I got everything I don't think I missed anything um, so I think we're ready to go so what I use in this Joe is I use a thing called um, voice attack and it allows me to basically give the computer commands like F keys without having to hit the keyboard because in VR it's hard to see so what the one thing I am going to set real quick since we're going uh, since we're going to be doing a route uh, I've got a series of waypoints set so we're going to do a way, that waypoint mode we're going to set it up for one and I'm going to set up a sequence so you see that little dotted line that's what I'm going to be following that's the whole idea um, I'm going to set this to my HUD just as a backup and then on this I'm going to set this to my fuel um, fuel meter so that I can see you can see right there I got a total of 1700 pounds of fuel and that's also in the IFE as well so I think we're ready now I forgot to request permission for startup because you know I'm selfish and I don't like to talk to people so what I'm going to do now is I'm <laughs> going to use my voice attack and um, we're going to open comm so I have to wait just a second so it understands that I'm not just talking and I'm going to say open comms I'm going to go F5, F5, F1, F3, requesting startup. I already started it, but they don't need to know that. Don't tell anybody. You guys be quiet. Doing good, Foxy. We just got this thing running. Okay, so we requested startup. We got permission. Uh, F1. Oh, sorry, I gotta wait a second. F1. Springfield, 1-1. One, one. Request taxi to runway. Springfield, 1-1. One, one. Clear to taxi to runway 1-3. Alright, Joe, we got permission. Alright, so I got my tow brakes here, so I'm gonna ho hold my tow brakes and I'm gonna release the parking brake. We are ready to move. Alright. So here we go. Did I need it. Did you check your fuel? Fuel is at 17.3. I am full up. I'm about as full as I can be. All right. So here we go. We're going to start taxiing now. So here we go. It, yeah. It's only got one gear. And then oh, we use the nose wheel steering. So you can see I can turn. And you should be seeing the motion platform actually rotating. It should be yawing as I do this. It feels like it is. All right, so we're going to taxi over here. How you doing, Foxy? Foxy said he's doing good. Excellent. I asked for All right, well, you ready to go for a ride with me in my jet plane? So we are actually in the Middle East. Um, we are close to this is Aldafra Air Base. Um, so you see there's a lot of sand. A lot of sand out here. Alright. Let's taxi this way. And then 
You're supposed to stop, um... You stop at the little red marks here before you take this... So, we're gonna start. Oh, might be shooting a little fast. Eh, yeah, you know. Alright, so now you go open comms. Oh, hold on. Open comms. F1. Springfield, 1-1. One, one. Request takeoff. All right. So you still want to make sure that uh, turn on my lights and make sure that no aircraft are coming in, and we will take the field. Hopefully, I don't crash the first thing out of the gate because that was a lot of startup. <laughs> well, you already cleared me, so I'm already on the runway. Sorry, dude. All right. Get on the center line. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm gonna real quick hit my trim again. I'm gonna make sure, wipe the controls, make sure everything looks like it's working, and it does. I'm gonna turn my HUD down a little bit so I can see in front of me because it's gonna start getting dark. So I'm gonna turn my HUD nut brightness down just a little bit. All right, now what you do now, Joe? Any questions before we take off? Well, we've got uh, T-Dub just entered the chat. T-Dub! The need. the need for speed. The need for <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, here we go. Um, for you guys that just showed up, let me show you what we're flying before I get in the air. Here we are. We are in the F-18. I love this bird. Love it, love it. So that's what we're flying here. And we're about to take off. Oh, that's not us. That's us. All right, that was my uh, tanker, actually. That's my KC-130 taking off. Okay, so you bring the engine up to about 80%, holding the tow brakes. And we check, make sure the temp doesn't go up to, like, over 800. It looks good. All right, I guess we'll do our usual Geigo thing. I'm going to go 3, 2, 1, and then we're going full burner, and we're taking off. So real quick, guys. What I'm doing here is I've got a path on my uh, waypoint path. The goal is not to go higher than 500 feet until I get to the mountains and also to stay in full afterburner the entire time. That's what we're going to try to do. We'll see if it works. All right. Joe, count me down. Okay, you know, the last thing you just said gargles out real bad. Uh-oh, what part? Count me down. Count me down, Joe, when you say you, you do the three, two, one, and then I'm going to nail it. Okay, are we ready? We, I think we're ready. Oh, hold on, hold on. I, I forgot to stret, tighten my straps. Okay, we're good. Okay, okay. All right. we're good. Okay. All right, three, two, one, go. Full burner, off brakes. Oh, I forgot to do one other thing. Hold on, brakes, brakes. There was something I knew felt a little weird. Do you remember on our live stream when we were flying and the guy accused me of not having motion compensation? Here we go. Motion compensation. We need this set to that. And we're going to go. And now we're compensated. Because just now, did you see how I flew back in the seat when I took off on the uh, visual? It's because I didn't have my motion compensation on. All right. Now we got it. So you can see my head with in relation to the chair. That should not change now. So we should be good. All right. That was that's a false start. Do it again, Joe. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? I am ready. All right. Three, two, one, go. Full burner. Off brakes, and here we go. I'll get to about 150 on my speed. I'm going to basically come off and try to get the gear up and the flaps up as soon as possible. Okay, and we're going to rotate. Come off the ground, gear up, flaps up, and we're going to do an immediate turn. So I want to get on course as soon as possible. So you can see that little dotted line I got there? And again, I don't want to go over 500 feet. That's my challenge, is not to go over 500 feet. We are in full burner, boys, and we are going to be booking. All right, here we go. Let's 
So you see a little tick mark. Um, that's my waypoint. So you can see that I'm almost to it. So here we go. 170 feet. My speed is to the left. My altitude is to the right. So you can see we're going pretty low. There we go. That's us. All right. Just got to go around the buildings. We're at 661 knots right now, Joe. We are supersonic. Okay. So there's this really cool kind of arena that we're going to fly right by here. Oh man, I'm having a hard time hearing you with these engines, Joe. I might have to turn the uh, volume down a little on this. All right, so my waypoint, you can see I've got 13 miles until the white waypoint switches. We're just right over the power lines. Now you get really low when you're uh, going over water because obviously there's not gonna be buildings hopefully popping out in the middle of the water. So let's see how low we can get here. We're at 90. Eighty. I'd like to get down to fifty, but there's sixty. Come on, a little bit more. Fifty. All right. We're about to do a brake turn to the right. Here in just a second. Let's get more on path here. Hold on, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pause real quick. I gotta turn the audio down. I can barely hear you with this jet engine. It's it's like real. What was that? Uh, I said, uh, JT40 has joined the chat and asked, "Is the motion believable?" Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> it is. It is. It. You obviously don't get the G forces like you would in real life, but what I tell people is, it feels more like I'm flying a jet then it feels like I'm playing a game or even a simulator. So it tricks your brain, especially in VR. Yeah, it feels like I'm flying. I mean, I, I absolutely love it. So, um, all right, here we go. Give me a sound check, Joe. Let me see if I can hear you a little bit better. I might have to go a little bit, turn it down just a little bit more. Or you're going to have to yell into the microphone. All right. 60, 50. Uh, yeah, you're still a little quiet, so if just just be a little loud. All right, so now, oh, I gotta go to auto. Going to the next waypoint. Come on, where's my? It's the one in the Pimax. It's the. It's not nearly as good as the other one. Damn, Pimax microphone is not not where it needs to be. No, what are you hearing? Are you hearing like static? Static. Yeah, okay, I know why. Static. It sounds like breaking up Wayne's World when they go through the drive-through for the. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm gonna place the order. That's I think what I, it sounds like. I think I know why, because I don't know if you can see right now, but my flowing locks from the uh, from the fans. I bet you the fans are blowing into the microphone. So let me do this real quick. So we'll go back uh, to here. Foxy. Yep. Foxy says, now imagine if the motion platform can add the G-Force. Yeah. They've tried to do things. Um, they've tried to kind of figure out how to do that. They've done things where they push panels into your back and stuff like that. Um, if anybody's interested, here's the settings that I'm using. So I have a feeling what you're probably hearing is probably because of the wind. So what we're going to do is we're going to just turn this all the way off. Gun Pilot uh, says, looking good, mate. He's joined the chat. Thanks. All right, let's see if this, this helps. So, yeah, the wind, what I have that in this, it's obviously not an open cockpit. But what I do is I have it kind of come up almost like just an air conditioner would be where you have just a little bit of vent, and it, it just helps add to that feeling of motion. So that's that's why I have that. Um, all right, so we're back here, and let's see what this does. 
And then I also want to point out, because I am using the motion compensation, um, oh, we don't have the FPS. Usually I got my FPS right there, but I don't have it on right now. So, um, all right, so we're okay. All right. And then what I have to do is, get a, okay, that should be about on track. And then I need to go to auto, so I need these uh, key things. Dang it. There it is. 70, 60, yep. There, and now we should auto, auto set my waypoints and all right now we're tracking now we're good all right so there's this little building over here uh it's kind of like i don't know if it's a hotel or what it is but um i like to always buzz it just because it's fun so that's where i got the path kind of running up through this area now, how long have you been flying this mission flying this mission or flying uh, oh, over the course, I mean, I'm always changing it a little, but I've probably done it 50, 40 times over the course of, just whenever I, like, like T-Dub said, whenever I've got, feel the need for speed, I generally get, and I really don't want to do that. It says we're streaming, so that side of it's good, but I don't know if it's going to pick it back up at the. It looks like it's still. Sometimes it's picked back up before, so you just never okay. know, right? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, now you're back up. Yep. Is it? Are we back? The stream is back up. Yep. All we're right. Back. Hey, well, that's good to know. It's good to know that OBS will reconnect. Welcome. You guys didn't miss anything. I paused it. We had a, uh, I think we have a memory leak in the, in the software I'm using to, um, actually give you guys my view so that it's not so cropped um it allows me to stabilize it so it's a little bit better view for you guys so it's not all the head movement and stuff so anyways this is right where joe told me we were off um i am out of window so i gotta do this let's see here so hopefully this works we'll see while you're yeah, at, don't get to check that, that flux capacitor mark that might be part of the issue here yeah, I think the flux capacitor. I think we're out of uranium or plutonium. What do we need? Plutonium, plutonium. right? Plutonium. Yeah, we right. might be out of plutonium. All right, we're going to go over here to TeamSpeak. I'm going to bump you up on the change volume so I can hear you a little bit better. Because over this jet engine, it's pretty bad. Oh, funny how jets work like that, right? Yeah, let's try that. All right, go ahead and talk now. Let's see if that's any better. Okay, audio check. How's it sounding to you, Mark? Better? Yeah, I can hear you better. Hopefully everybody else can hear you still. I've got to Let check that. Check I'm... the stream. Okay. All right, I think we're good, guys. I think we're back. This is the joy of a live stream. i got to get back to the window. Hold on. i got to get back to DCS. There we go. Now we're in the window. So you're asking about if it feels real. It feels real until you go into the menus and the desktop. <laughs> so, yeah, we have we have audio on the chat. Just verified it. All right, all right. I think we're back. So gotta get back into my flight mode, man. <laughs> okay, here we go. Because we are booking right now. We are at 664 knots. All right, give me a countdown, Joe. Tell me when. Okay, three, two, one. Let it rip. All right, so here we go. All right, so we're coming up to the city now. We're 200 feet. Let's go try to hot dog a little bit over here. You can see we got all the cranes and stuff. Important not to run into stuff, Joe. That's one of the good things about flying. Do not run into things. Yeah, don't. Yeah, that, that's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, t -dubs, this, uh this is happening. Because Daryl isn't in the back, it's in the backyard pedaling that generator. Yeah, Daryl, you got to pedal faster, man. All right, here we go. Okay, now we get a little crazy here. All right, all right. Go through the buildings. 
Again, our ceiling is 500. Let's pull it over here, whip it back, show you this awesome, oh, 460, woo! I don't think I went over 500, gotta watch it. So there's, here's one of my favorite, um, you see that's a, that's a famous building. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. I know that there's a short stop, there's a helipad on top of that, and there's an actual Red Bull competition where people try to land on it with an airplane. It's crazy. Um, all right, so this, there's this really interesting building over here that looks like a picture frame, and I'm obliged to always fly through it whenever I run this. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, don't hit the crane. Don't hit the buildings. Go around the crane. Now there's the building, so you gotta cut it pretty close here. And we are gonna try to go right through there. They probably don't like you doing this, but you know. <laughs> you All right. Permission, buddy. Yeah, All it's right. always easier. It it's always easier to beg for forgiveness. Now, let me get on a little bit of a straight path here. All right, so now we are out of fuel on our tanks. So I'm gonna come down here and we are gonna just in the tanks and they're gone. So sorry whoever's house that landed on, but you know, send the bill to US government. Ow. <laughs> they didn't get my yeah. plate number. That's right. Uh, so Punisher has joined the chat, says so hello. Hey. Punisher, and, what's up, man? And the, uh, let's see here. Man, PK, GK, RV Power. Cool setup. Awesome. I Thanks. I enjoy my crystal more as bugs, etc. being fixed. Hope, yep. Hope the wide FOB lens works well when I get them. I'm looking forward to it, too. I've been doing some research on that. It seems like... It seems like the majority of people don't like it because it seems like it really makes the sweet spot very small. And then also they're having problems with the binocular overlap, but it sounds like the clarity is still there. So I'm anxious to try them because I wouldn't mind a little more FOV and I'm not as susceptible to binocular overlap as other people. Um, so I'm excited to try them for myself and see what they do. All right, have we achieved our goal? We haven't gone over 500 feet yet, right? Now we're hitting, getting out in the desert, see the sun's coming down. All right, um, and then you can see I've got one and a half miles to the, my next waypoint. So if you watch that block that's kind of on my compass, it's going to slide over in just a second. There it goes. So now we work over to that. Get back on, and I'm following. So I'm following that dotted line. That's the. That's what I'm trying to do. Is follow that dotted line you see on my HSI. Come yeah, on. Would be the screen on the left. That's right. It's that screen right there. All right. Now this gets interesting because obviously, as you know, barometric altitude does not take into consideration the ground elevation. So even though it might say that I'm 160, I'm not. And actually, what I can do is I can actually flip this over to radar altimeter, uh, and now you'll see the actual height above that I am from the ground. So. It's actually using radar now, so let's get down here. It, the problem is it's right under the plane, so you still have to watch what's coming up because if you're going up a hillside, um, you know, you'll still run into the hill because it won't tell you that that's a higher elevation up until the point you go over the top of it. All right, so we're just above power line level here. Let's get a little lower. And then we're going to get into the mountains. We're down to 500 pounds of fuel, or 5,000 pounds. We start with 17,000. So we have been full burner this whole time. You can see we are burning the fuel uh, like crazy. Now, once I get in the mountains, I'm going to cut the engine because obviously I'm not good enough to fly the mountains at full burner. So there we go. Woo, 40. Yep, it's getting close. All right. So we're going to come down here. I'm going to go switch it back to uh, barometric altitude. Okay. Package KRB is what I'm guessing that abbreviation stands for. Package KRB power says yes, indeed. That's what it 
said earlier about the first one. All right, so we're going to start killing some throttle. See me surge, surge for it a little bit, and then when we get into these mountains. So I got 4,000 pounds of fuel. It's not a lot for going as fast as we're going. I am going to need to tank. So what the idea here is, I basically want to stay in the valleys as much as possible. This is kind of that Top Gun Maverick stuff. Try to stay low in the valleys. If you have to go over the top, you go over the top. And so we're going to try to... Woo! You can see this thing move a little bit. This should be good for the motion platform. And it is getting dark. It's getting dark. So we're going to bust through here. Let's try to stay below. And then when you hit a point where you can't, obviously there's nowhere to go from here. We'll just dive over the top and try to stay as low as we can. Said it should be getting some good movement in the in the camera. Looks good. All right, coming down through here. Trying to stay as close to that course line as I can. Um, and obviously that mountain over the top, I'll try to do the whole pop up over the top and dive down. So you can see we're in a valley, a little area. Now I am currently booking it. I've got my burner going right now. Burning the fuel. And we're going to pop over the top, invert, dive down. Like shooting back home. With my T16, baby. Just like that. Exactly. All right. Beggar's Canyon. All right. Uh, T-Dev says when you fly over a ridge, you should do it in party. Right, that's what I just did. All Top Gunny like. Ooh, all right. Cut down through here. It is getting dark. It's getting dark, Joe. Back at the KRB Tower S. I'm curious, did you use a third-party app to run it better? Uh, please and thank you. Uh, run this? No. Run DCS? Is that what he's asking? Um, uh, I ran a plug-in on OBS for the stream if that's what you're talking about, that uh, allowed me to put some some stabilization so you don't have as bad a head jerking movements. All right, now we are at 2,000 fuel. A sensible person, Joe, would stop at this airfield that's coming up because, you know, you're running low on fuel. Right. I've never been accused of being sensible. All right, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to hope we can get to the tanker. It may not end well, but we are... We are going to try it. We're going to go to the tanker. So what we're going to do is we're going to buzz down this airfield basically as fast as we can, and then we're going to go vertical. So I'm going to hopefully get on the strip here. All right, we're going to go full burner and get, get our speed up and get ready because I'm going to climb when I hit the end of this. And we're going to go vertical. So, and vertical. All right, there we go. So we're going to climb a little bit. Fuel's getting low. Give you an outside view here. And even have a little smoke that I can put on a little show for you guys. All right. So what now... <laughs> what did that last sign say? Last chance for gas. Last, for last gas chance for gas. Yeah, yes. What? Yep, and uh, so now I need to get my tack in going, which is your navigation. So we're turning the tack on on. And then we need to go to tack in 28. Enter. We're going to take the waypoints off. Because that doesn't matter now. Turn it off. Turn off the sequence. All right, so we want to go to tack in navigation. And we should have, all right, tanker, 48. Ooh. Ooh. All right, 1,500 pounds of fuel. Okay, <laughs> well, here we go. <laughs> so what I can do is I can actually couple the autopilot to the TACAN. 
and it should start steering me that way. I got the fuel, so we got a caution here, low fuel. I'm aware. So uh, let's see. T Dub T Dub had said that he spoke too soon about going inverted over the mountain. <laughs> uh, uh, then uh, Foxy in reply said, uh, "Mark is uh, Mark is no guts, no glory." <laughs> and uh, package KRB power said, "Thank you guys. Pimax XR is my go-to. To is my go-to." Yeah, I. Yeah, Pima, it's been a good headset. I've been enjoying it. I still wish we had OLED. Give you a nice view here. Again, we do some smoke. TWS, if that smoke is a uh, is a blown head gasket. No, it's not. It's it's a smoke pod. Uh, let's see if I can give you a little. There we go. You know, I don't really have fuel. I shouldn't be doing that. But hey, you know. It's for the live stream. <laughs> All right, there's my tanker. All right, how we doing? Let's get back on course. Where is the tanker that way? Tanker is 46. And I... All right. I'm kind of trying to save my fuel a little bit. Kind of. um, yeah, I like the Pimax. It's been a good headset. Uh, again, I want OLEDs, but it'll be interesting to see what that FOV lens does. So when, it, when, it, when it's when you've got the smoke screen going, is that going to pass emissions? I'm just curious. Yes, because okay. it's a government agency. Okay. <laughs> when you have bigger guns than the agency, you pass emissions. Man, <laughs> so. you've got to love that logic. <laughs> I could I could put I think I could put about I think I put about ten thousand pounds worth of bombs on this jet. So you know, <laughs> there there's, you there's a lot. So you got to admire this. Look at this sunset. We might run out of gas, but at least, at least we're closer to heaven if we die. <laughs> so, see, that's the upside, right? Right. All right, got us up. We're at 12, 12,000 feet. Oh, we need a little more, a little more oomph. Now I wonder where the that tanker is. Really far. I think we took too long talking, Joe, when we started up. Tanker's usually kind of waiting for me up here. Not sure if this is going to work out in our favor. I don't know how you, far. Now, what happens if you what happens if you proverbially run out of gas? It shuts down just like it would in a normal plane. All of a sudden, everything starts to power off. The engine dies. The electronics go dead, and you you coast as long as you can coast. <laughs> so you can try to probably, safe safe land it. Probably not going to make it back to that airfield. No, what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to check on my tacking because we've got the tanker. Um, we know the carrier, I think the carrier is, let's see how far the carrier is. Oh, carrier is, uh, carrier is seven, uh, 130. So, yeah, we need the tanker. Tanker would be good. So you can see Foxy it turning says, as it's moving me. Foxy says, no, don't crash into the tanker. Uh, Can't promise anything. Uh, package KRV Power says, thanks for all you do, guys. Appreciate your efforts today. Keep up, up the good work. Um, no problem. The power of a 4090. I'm envious. Oh, and, it's glorious. And uh, Foxy says, uh, "I got to get for a bit. I'll be back." Thanks. For All right, Foxy. That. Thanks for joining. Thanks for hanging out. How's the motion looking on the stream? Because obviously, I can't. I can't see it. Ooh. Uh, I think the motion looks looks pretty. Uh, looking at the, the motion on the platform or the motion uh, through Did, the, the headset? Uh, on the platform. is it? Are you seeing some good motion on it? Yeah, what you're doing is a thing. Like right now, it looks like it's, it's pretty still pushing well, yeah. a pretty flat level flight. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can see it move around and do some things. Uh, a lot of motion with the headset. Ah, uh, I'm trying. Sorry, that's, that's just... Looking around. That's okay. I mean, yeah. You're, you're trying to fly a jet, right? Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Hopefully it's not jittery though. They, they were supposed to be smoothing on it. So now I'm a little concerned because we are under a thousand pounds now, which is really low. I might want to look at if there's an airfield around here. So I'm going to go open map and let's see. Let's see if there's anything even remotely close to us to land at. Oh, there's one north. 
Oh, and there's one south. Okay, we're doing okay. Um, I don't know if they have. Let's go. Let's go south. Because there's a couple of fields down looks, there. Looks good, and he's waiting for the uh, the surge from the from the carrier launch. Oh yeah, we'll do that next. I've got a few planned. I plan on doing some bombing. Well, you guys tell me. We can do bombing. We can do dog fighting. It's kind of whatever you like. So. Now, I've never tried to peel off before, but I, we are not going to make it with 800 pounds of fuel. Now, what I don't know is if this is a friendly base so we can get services or not, but let's go see what we can see. Sure is pretty, though. Yeah, and this Pimax is glorious. These, uh, these QLED screens are beautiful at sunset. All right. If they were just OLEDs. If they were just OLEDs. Yeah, I pretty much just decided I'm not buying another headset till there's OLED in there. So, I think this is the, I think this is the place. So, if you were starting off right now, uh huh. And uh, what what headset? If you, if you didn't even have a headset, which headset would you buy? Just from ground zero. Um, it depends on money. If I was, if I had the money, I would do the Pimax. If for simming, this is a amazing headset. If it was, uh, if I didn't have the money, I'd buy a Quest Three. So uh, that's that's probably it. Because the Quest Three is pretty nice. It gives us a pretty nice view. That looks better like a than, runway. Better than the H2, the Reverb G2. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, because of the lenses. The lenses are the difference. Any headset with Fresnel lenses in them is such old technology. That is a drastic difference. Now, having crystal clear lenses uh, that you get either from Pancake or Aspiric, um, it's just amazing. Hey, it's getting dark. We better turn on some lights here. All right, that looks like that looks like a landing strip. So I think we're gonna try it. Again, I don't know if I can get services here, but you'll notice we're down to 700 pounds, which is very little. <laughs> All right, so we're going to turn... Um, well, considering it started off at 17,000 pounds. Yeah, yeah. All right, so come on, where's my... For whatever reason, this little crosshair is not does not work as well as it used to. Is there a way you could change the color of the little crosshair? No, not that I'm aware of. It used to be kind of a blue, baby blue. All right, so we got gear down. Flaps are down. Should be able to land this pretty good. I mean, geez, you got all the room in the world. Hey, look, fuel low, Joe. <laughs> hey, look at that. 600 pounds. Ooh. Let's see how we do here. Just be glad you're not having to pay for that kind of fuel fuel consumption yeah. out of your pocket. Jeez. Yeah, so what, 17,000 pounds at probably $3 a gallon at least? Yeah, well, how many is it? Seven seven pounds of fuel per, per gallon. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a, that's a bunch. <laughs> All right. See if I can land this halfway decently. I'm just over stall speed right now. Guys, I haven't landed a nice casual landing like this in a long time. Hopefully we don't run long, because it doesn't look like a really a really long runway. Oh, we're down. Uh, do you know what do you know what the price of going rate of Jet A is? Uh-uh. I'm gonna guess it's probably five five or six dollars a gallon maybe wow i don't know for sure but all right but it's 2428 gallons to fill that dude up jeez all so right even at, even at three dollars a gallon 7285 bucks to fill that puppy up at three dollars a gallon ouch all right, so if I can get fuel here, guys, we will do it. I'm down to 500. I don't know if that's doable or not, 
but we come to a stop here. Now, what happens if you can't you can't feel it up there? Now, nah, well, now we're just mission stuck. Over. Yeah, mission over basically. So let's see if we got comp. So if if it's a, I think as long as it's not an enemy air base, we're good. So let's find out here. Open comms. F eleven. F eight. Um, where's refuel? F1. Rearm refuel. F1. There we go. We got it. Look at that. Fill me up, baby. Fill me up. Request refueling. All right, so now we can just hang out for a minute. Request now, I don't know. One of the things that's changed is they've actually changed this flight model. Um, and I have been having a hard time. The landing gear looks good. Oh, am I still smoking? Hold on. Oh, I was still smoke. <laughs> I was still running the smoke. Um, so I've been having a hard time with my landing gear. I think we're okay. It doesn't look like it's damaged here, but. So if it's still smoking, is that, oh, look at that. It says burning extra fuel to do that? I don't think so. I think it uses the exhaust, if I remember right. I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember how smoke stuff works, but. Um, yeah. Um, okay. I know I requested refuel. Where, uh, where's the fuel? <laughs> uh, they used to fuel me off the tank, or off the runway. I didn't use it. 490. Let's do that again. Open comms. F8. F1. Oh, that was ammo. Let's try the fuel this time. Hey, I got all the bullets I need. Let's try it again. There it is. So we'll see that little number there. Hopefully we'll start going up in a minute. So, yeah, they've changed everything. They've just released a major patch for DCS. And they've remodeled uh, the landing gear and all those kinds of things. <coughs> and I'm having a hard time landing on the deck. I can get on the deck, but I crater the landing gear all the time. So I'm really having a hard time with that soft touch. So maybe they, maybe even though I can pull that menu up, they can't do it. So because I'm not seeing anything. Let me go pull into the thing. He dub says seven dollars per gallon over there where he's at. Wow. All right, let me go get off the runway. Maybe they changed somewhere I can't refuel on the runway anymore. That's usually you don't. Question. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to distract you. Go ahead. Oh, it's all right. Uh, try to. The, so the question is, in England, because I know that lots of parts of Europe measure things in liters, so in England, yeah. do they sell it by the liter or do they sell it by the gallon? I think it's liters, right? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. I just, you just got to thinking about it. Because England, you know, because England, of course, would be, you know, imperial, which would mm -hmm. be, you know, our traditional measures, you know, units, true. units of measure that we use here. But. Well, luckily, we have T-Dub to answer such questions. Man, I love it when T-Dub's here to answer. I do, too. I love having T-Dub here. Uh, Washington right. Dirt Prospecting says, uh, I the sky on the tanker. Yep. I ran out of gas, couldn't get to it. We will do some tanking, says, though. T-Dub says by the liter. So how much is it a liter, T-Dub? All right, let's see if we come over here if they'll refuel us. Normally, I wasn't able to get any kind of um, chatter with them. With, but if they I said didn't, they were if, gonna refuel you, right? Yeah, yeah. We're just gonna stop right here because we gotta be able to turn around if they can refuel us. Oh. Come on! All right, open comms. Open comms. F8. F1. Oh, I wonder if maybe maybe they won't because it keeps going back. Try that. All right, come on. Request refueling. We'll see. E Otherwise, we're going to run out. Request rearming. E Dub says a dollar eighty-five a liter. Uh, prospecting dirt. Washing dirt prospecting says in. And. Uh, I'm going to mess up the name. I'm sorry. Uh, Herve 
Uh, as free. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, says, uh, you may have to shut it down to, to refuel. Nah, you don't. Question. You don't normally have to do that. I think I'm not getting any response from the ground crew, so I'm making the call out to refuel me, but they're not answering. So I think uh, I think we just uh, we're gonna leave it here. <laughs> I think we're gonna park it here. So so there it is. That's that's her in all her glory right there. But you know what the beautiful thing about this is? You you didn't you didn't run out of fuel in flight. I did with. Didn't. Uh, with, with, with uh, having to ditch in the ocean, so the aircraft is recoverable at this point. So yeah, that's a big bonus, right? They just, yeah, it doesn't come out my paycheck. It, yeah, absolutely. See? So, all right, well, let's. Uh, so that was fun. That was just a little bonsai through the city, and we didn't crash. Went through the mountains, all that kind of stuff. Um, so let's do something else. Let's go. Uh, oh gosh, do I want to go beginner? Which one? Let's go. Let's go, expert. This is going to get ugly, guys. Okay. I can't go beginner. Beginners for people that come over and play. I can't do that. So this is basically, we've got a choice of what we want to do here. Um, so let's let the chat decide. Do we want to go bombing mission? Do we want to go dogfighting? Because I can do either off of this mission. And we have a little bit of a, of a, little bit of a delay today, too. So give it a second to hit the chat. Yeah, no worries. No worries. So this is another little mission I put together that um, actually when I started flying with some other guys, I put this together so we could do multi-flights and, and many of us could go out, And but it works good for this too. So um, so we will be starting on the carrier T-Dub so you get to see the cat launch and uh, uh, all that good stuff. Prospecting, prospecting is asking, did you fight? And uh, T-Dub is voting for dogfighting. Dogfighting? All right. So that's what T-Dub says. No, and then we have not done anything dirt processing or he hasn't done anything other than this one mission which is the what do you call this mission mark the one we just did i yes. just called it my racing mission like need for speed like just bonsai in the the city <laughs> below go. 500 yeah, so. feet yeah, that's just the one to just haul butt through the city so it's only one mission so far so that's what you what you've seen is 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 where we're at right now or where so adrian adrian you want some dog fighting so what you're into so this is kind of cool because Adrian on here, obviously, like I think I mentioned on the last live stream, he and I kind of met and bonded over over flight simming. So it's cool that he's on here. Sheer, Sheer Insane says dog fighting. Dog fighting. All right. Dog fighting. And then dirt, dirt, uh, dirt processing, washing dirt processing says, who let the dogs out? <laughs> All right. Here we go. Dog fighting it is. F-18. So... On this mission, we've got an AWACS, and we've got an enemy airbase. And so we want to defend our AWACS, um, who's up there. He Go ahead. asking well, are you, if you're going to if you're going to use a carrier. Basically, he says, does he have yeah. time to grab a cup of coffee before the cat launch? Yeah, go do it. I'll I'll hang here for a minute. Let us know when you're back. We can just chat. So this is um, so I can kill the motor. We can start it. So basically. Um, We've got – we're off the coast of um, uh, United Arab Emirates, and there is a – there's a terrorist cell that have taken over a factory that we can go bomb, or we can dogfight and try to defend the AWACS, and there's a, a series of planes that will come after us. Um, starts with a MiG-21, um, then goes with a pair of F-5s that come after us, and then it goes random. It can be a single MiG-29. It can be, I think I have even a flight of four MiG-29s. So it randomly picks something to launch against us. Uh, usually about that time, I'm out of missiles. So anyways, we'll start this up, nice. but we won't We won't take off till T-Dub's here. So, uh, prospecting right, has made an there. observation. He says, uh, the city doesn't fight back. No, it doesn't. I was just, I was just killing time until you got here, buddy. So... All right, so if, if you aren't familiar with this, this is the Super Carrier module. And this is so freaking awesome. So it looks any, like you're on a carrier. Do you have any expansion packs or anything, or is this just the base module? No, this Super Carrier is a module. Um, and so it, it's a more refined uh, Super Carrier. And then also you see the, the, the guys, uh, the crew guys. So the stock one just has an empty carrier. There's no people walking on deck or anything like that. So this super carry module is just awesome. 
I absolutely love it. So, um, you know, pretty cool deal. And then I, I dressed it up. I put the, I put all the extra aircraft on it, so it looked like it was functional, not just empty. So that's that's the back of it. There's the back of the, uh, there's the back of the boat. So that's what you come in on. And you got the search and rescue helicopter up there. So yeah, we're just kind of trucking off here. Um, Theodore Roosevelt. Oh, I've never, I've never actually had a chance to look this closely at the back end. Look, he's got the the Theodore Roosevelt on the back. Usually this view I only see for a split second. So, <laughs> as I'm coming in. But, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, when T-Dub gets here, we'll be good. Um, I guess I can start up. Let's get back in the cockpit. So, uh, one thing, might as well get things going. Got to find my little crosshairs. Again, it's weird. I don't know what they changed in here, but the crosshair is so much harder to, to locate than it used to be. I just saw it a second ago. There it is. Bring it inside. There it is. All right, so we're going to turn on. We'll get things going. Turn on our radar warning system. Um, definitely turn on the chaff and flares. Um, let's see. Let's go data link. Let's upload that. Prospecting is uh, laughing at your previous comment. Which one? <laughs> um, all right, we're good there. Wiping all that. What else can I do? I guess. What do we got? We got three tanks, I think. Yeah, we got three so bags you, on us. If you were just starting off in DCS, which... Uh, <clears throat> which modules, which aircraft would you would you get starting off? Um, if you if you're not familiar with these high end models with the flight systems and everything, um, I would probably maybe even start with a flaming the flaming clips. Sorry, flaming cliffs mod. It's it's simplified avionics. That's what we all started with. Um, so there, you don't actually click anything in the cockpit. You use uh, keystrokes and stuff. So it's more like your traditional. Uh, computer flight sim if you're into the heavy duty stuff um you're going to spend a lot of time learning it so pick a plane that you like so i don't know that any one plane has anything over another it's it's more whatever whatever plane you really like and i love the f-18 um but you're going to spend hours and hours studying it learning about it learning what the systems do so just pick one you like if you like f-16s grab one of those if you like you know the phantoms coming out soon they just released the f-15 I personally like Navy Ops because I love being on the carrier and I love the challenge of landing on the carrier. So um, that's what I kind of like. But, um, yeah, I would say whatever plane you like. That's what I would say. Aku Games uh, has joined the chat says, uh, I'm still <coughs> not sure if I should go for a Pimax Crystal. I have the Pico 4 and Quest 3. Is it worth the upgrade for visual fidelity? Are you a millionaire? It would be my question. If if money is not an object, you do get a benefit from the uh, from this, and, and the big benefit is the eye tracking, which is nice for your uh, dynamic fovea rendering. And I love having lighthouse tracking. I you can see I got the lighthouse tracking faceplate on this. I love having lighthouse, but the difference in the quality is not real big. I'd say the Quest Three gets you about eighty percent of the visuals that this gets you. So if that extra twenty percent is worth, you know, the extra fifteen hundred, um, sure. Um, but if if money's tight at all, nah, the Quest Three is pretty dang good. I spent a lot of time when I was testing it, flying and racing, and it was real pleasurable. I really enjoyed it. I I, I wasn't disappointed at all. I wasn't like, man, I can't wait to get to back to the Pimax. I was kind of like, the Pimax is better, but it's not that much better. It's it's pretty close. So I would say if you've got the money to burn and you want to max out the visual quality, yes. Um, if your money's a little tight, you'll be fine with that Quest 3. Just stick with that. Um, would be me. Prospecting has says, uh, I think this is probably what he was laughing at earlier, says, since the hell he's already in the air, they know something? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've learned from experience. Send out the search and rescue chopper. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's just standard formation. I think that's standard procedure. They always have a SAR bird in the air whenever they're doing flight ops. Um, or because it's me. I don't know. One of the two. 
So, um, go ahead. Prospecting's offering some advice here. It says uh, DCS has two modules. DCS has two modules included, two flake planes. So, uh, no need to buy a module right away. That's true. And, that is true. And, and TW is back. It says cheers, waiting mark. Okay. Uh, cheers for waiting mark. I had a. Let's see, was it? Huh. He said, I had a tongue like Gandhi's flip flop. <laughs> <laughs> Leather. Okay. Uh, um. <laughs> prospecting, prospecting says Quest 3 is best bang for the buck. Yeah. Agreed. All right. We got to get in the air because I'm pretty sure that they're already probably shot down the AWACS. I don't know if they have or not, but we're going to give it a shot. All right. So what you do now is we're going to give it full afterburner, and we're going to say salute. and Because you have to give it a salute before you take off, and then you'll watch all our guys here. And this is where you can uh, you see they all kneel down. He'll do his thing. Don't have your hand on the control stick when you launch. It'll throw you everywhere. All right, we're off. Gear up, flaps to auto. And we're gonna rotate this way. Try to get some speed. You're supposed to stay under 500 feet until you're, I think, a mile away from the carrier is Navy Ops, but... Um, we're going to get get some speed, and then we're going to go vertical. All right. There we go. We're out of here. Okay. Let's see how we do. All right. So I'm going to go to air-to-air, -air, get my air-to-air -air going. So I've got my radar. Um, and so you can call AWACS. AWACS. Let's see what they got. So I'm going to request bogey dope. So uh, request bogey dope. Haku Game says, uh, thanks for the answer. You got a new subscriber. That's fantastic. Thanks, man. Thanks for subscribing. Oh, boy. Uh, hey, oh, there he is. Oh, uh, prospecting says two flyable is what he meant to say. Oh, two flyable yeah. Flyable. They're uh, the Russian, I think it's the flanker. I think it's the flanker. They're out 50. Okay. And prospecting says, plenty to learn from those two before going into more advanced modules. Yes. I would say that's accurate. All right, so we got to get our radar going here. Um, so it sounds like he's at 50. We got radar set to 40. So we're going to set it to there. I bet that's him right there. Let's lock that up. We do have AMRAMs on here, which, okay, that's friendly, but I know he's heading towards the friendly. So we don't want to shoot him, but we want to head towards him because we need to defend him. Um, right now, our loadout is we've got two AMRAMs, uh, bra 126, 126 at 45, so we've got to get to them. Um, I didn't see, I think he's high, I think he's pretty high up already. Um, man, I don't see the other, is that the, there he is, I think that's the bandit right there. So I'm going to... Come on. He's close to our friend, so you can see the radar picture's a little a little dicey right there. The two of them there. Heat up says, man, that surge is something else. I love it. Uh, All right, I normally would sorry, go ahead. Prospect he says, uh, Flaming Cliffs 3 is nice as it includes lots of planes, but fidelity of aircraft uh, models is not as advanced as the dedicated models. Yeah, so if you're a if you're a seasoned simulator pilot, you probably don't want Flaming Close 3 because it's more your traditional, easier stuff. Um, but if you've never done a lot of flight simming and are curious, I think Flaming Close 3 is a good introductory to it, and it's really reasonably priced for how many planes you get. Um, but if you are into diehard flight simming, you want to pick whatever aircraft you really like and go for it. So you can see on our topology here, we've got uh, 25 uh, miles to the target. So we're coming in, trying to get to them quickly. One thing you want to do is if you are going to get into a dogfighting situation, you want to drop your fuel tanks. Um, I'm going to try to keep them. And I'm going to probably hit this guy with a missile, um, depending, because I don't. We'll see if we get a call from the AWACS that they're defending. If they're not defending, I might try to engage them 
with uh, guns. I like to dogfight with guns because um, that's you know true pilot skill. But uh, you know I don't win all the time. But I, I prefer dogfighting with guns. So, but if I have to, I can use the Amram, which is a distance missile. I could hit him with that Fox Three. I've got six Sidewinders. So those are heat seekers. So I can do that when I get within about ten if I want to, and then guns are up close and personal. So that's kind of the plan. Man, he is up there, though. Woo! Okay. He's getting there. So here's a, here's a pretty cool view. Check that out. All right, turn off our lighting. Back in the cockpit. Okay. So he's within range for me to fire now, but I I only got two AMRAMs. I'd like to keep him if I can. But man, whoo, he's up there. And I don't know where my AWACS is. Uh, he's he's getting close to it. Come on, come on, come on. I might have to decide one. Like I said, if I get... Oh, no, 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 OBS again. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's 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 the it's the plugin that I got, and they warned me, but I thought ah, it's that was a long time ago. I feared they'd fix this memory leak, up. but okay, we're back. I paused it as soon as we had that. So basically, this is an OBS. This is a plugin I got for it that helps um, stabilize my view, the VR view. So that's the reason it's having. So we paused. We're right where we were. So hopefully, we'll pick up where we were. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to find a different solution for the streaming this. A Aku Games says, uh, did you ever think back in the 80s that one day you would have a setup like this in your home? I mean, we had Afterburner in the arcades back then, but VR in motion, uh, but, but VR in motion, we have come a long way, LOL. Yeah, what I can tell yeah. you, and I've said this a few times, I never in my life thought I'd be experiencing this because... Um, I remember going to Disneyland and doing Star Tours with the first, you know, those were the big box simulators. And I remember Afterburn, too, but I never, ever in my life dreamed I'd have this. Um, that's what makes this unbelievable to me, having a motion platform in my house that I can, I don't even have to wait for two hours in line to do it. I could jump in it any time I want. And so it is a dream come true. And that mixed with virtual reality and with the clarity and the realism of the new VR headsets what a great time to be alive, man. I mean, I absolutely love it. And, I, and I've and i said many times, buying this platform was one of the best purchases I've ever made, um, bar none. I mean, this and VR are probably two of the biggest things that have added to this unbelievable uh, experience that I can I can do. So, so I man, I hear you so much. And that's why I get frustrated when people badmouth DOF reality and say, well, they cog and they do that. Yes, it's not perfect, but it's also not you know, $50,000. That was the thing. We had access to motion simulators, but they cost $50,000. So to have one that you can actually afford, it's pretty unbelievable. So anyways, all right. Uh, T-Dub said, uh, we need an intermission jingle while we wait. I and, know. <laughs> uh, prospecting says after burner equals money burner. Yeah. And uh, T-Dub says a lot cheaper than buying a Cessna. That is no lie, T-Dub. Yep. You are so right. Adrian, what was the one that you and I played in the college? I can't remember the name of it. Was it just like F-16 Combat or something? I don't remember. Adrian and I, that's how we met, was there was a sit-down. Um, it was basically a flight simulator. It was an arcade flight simulator, but, you know, it wasn't it wasn't Afterburner style, and that's how he and I got to know each other. And I can't remember the name of that stupid thing. So, all right. Well, it's about to get crazy. You can see... I got some vapor trails up in front of me. Yeah, and we got some stuff going on. So I don't know if you can see there's a black dot right out there. I think that's the bogey, I think, but I'm not 100% sure because um, I paused it and went to OBS to get it started. It looks like he's dropping flares is why I say that because um, it looks like he's got some flares behind him. So we're about to find out, and we're waiting. All right, what's going on with the TR now? VR's Prospecting says... Air Combat was the first arcade version. Air Combat, that's what it was called? Okay. Yep. Okay. And then uh, VR Flight Sim Guy has joined. Hey, hey and Steve! Says, and says, hey, Mark, just stop by to say hi. I'll share my, uh, I'll share this on my Discord. 
uh, keep up the great content. Steve, it's thank you, my things. friend. Appreciate it. Well, we're about to do some dog fighting. We'll see how this goes. Uh, we have. I ran a filter. Um, okay. It's a plug-in for OBS, and it keeps crashing us. So we've crashed a couple times. So we should be good for a few minutes at least. At least long oh, enough wait. for me to get shot down here. Uh, Prospect, you said it was Ace. Ace Combat. Ace Combat. It was the first arc. Ace Combat. Okay. Uh, I was trying to remember the one that we played in the arcades. So. That's what Steve, he, man, that's thank what you for swinging to. by, buddy. I really appreciate it. So um, those of you that yeah, don't Steve, know... VR Flight Sim Guy has an amazing VR channel. Go see him if you haven't yet. Uh, he's from across the pond, as it were. And one of these days, Steve, I want to get you on one of our live streams with Igor and all that stuff. I want to get caught up with you in real life so uh, on the live stream. So uh, just, just know I'm going to be reaching out to you sometime. But uh, anyways, well, let's see if Mark can survive a dogfight, shall we? We're trying to save an AWACS. we got a MiG-21 going after him. And we'll see what happens. So, all right, here we go. All right, there he, that looks like, what do we got here? Yep, that's, yeah, he's got flares. He's coming out with flares. And I'm going way fast. Yep, that's a 21. All right. And this new model with, oh, come on. Come on. Now I'm getting VR stuff, VR stutter. That's going to be not great for, for dog fighting. All right, where'd he go? All right, we're going to dogfight. i got to drop these tanks. We are not in good shape here. All right, tanks are gone. And come on. I blame Steve. All right, where is... Where is he? All right, I think the OBS thing is really messing stuff up. He's probably behind me. Yep, he is definitely behind me. I don't see him. Well, this is not ideal setting up as a at a disadvantage. Prospect now this is Mig twenty one. I thought this was an expert. Oh, uh, I I kind of go up. I set this up. There he is. I set this up so other people could. There he is. Ah, where is he? I don't want him to get shots on me. He's still behind me. Come on, Mark. Do some of that pilot shit. <laughs> ah, see if I can go over the top. I see him. Come on, come on, come on. Just hit the brakes and let him fly the right by. Yeah, there we go. Oh, man, I lost him. Where'd he go? Totally lost him. Lost him in the sun. Shoot. There he is. He's still behind me. I think that's him. That might be a ship. That's a ship. If you don't see him, that means he's behind you. Oh, where did that come from? F-12. I don't need my comms open. All right. Crap, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Don't fly predictable. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go vertical. Let's see if I can get a view on him. There he is. He's, no, that might be him. Yep, he just hit his afterburner. Uh, he's going that way. Foxy's back. Hey, Foxy. We are Play starting to get a little low for the speed. Bomb and enter the chat to hit the brakes. Yeah. Yeah. There he is. There he is. Come on, come on, come on. This is where the motion platform is awesome. Because I can vi I can feel what orientation the plane's at, and it helps so much. Oh, I think I, I blew all my speed. Oh, crap. Come on, get speed back. Damn, I had him, too. I apologize for the jerkiness in the visuals, but I got somebody trying to kill me. Dang it. Where is he? I hate him. There he is. Oh, thought I saw him. 
There he is. It's a nice thing. He'll eventually come up. Oh, shit. Ah. There you go. I'm doing a little pirouette, guys. <laughs> so, so, Sabrina has joined the chat. She says, Hi, oh, I'm here. Just you got here just in time. <laughs> oh, what is yeah. that? What, what is yeah. That? I'm going to blame that. Uh, I'm going to punch. Oh, I think he killed me, too. I think he killed me because I can't even punch out. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, you get to see a little motion here. I don't think I've ever tumbled that bad. Hey, the motion looks cool on the visuals on the screen. Yeah, it's going to hurt when I hit the ground. Yeah, I can't even punch out. I'm dead. He killed me. Man, look at that. So, Steve, you don't have to worry about ever dogfighting me. You obviously will kick my butt. I'm going to blame the VR for that one, though. We're about to hit. All right. I think, I, think we I normally would stop this, play. by the way, but hold on. And come on, gentle. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That's kind of like a nice little went in the water. You bastard. All right, First hold on. Aaron. Well, if you remember, I was getting all that... Uh, that stuff at the beginning we're gonna do that again and hopefully do it fly um did that help on the wind because it probably was just blowing in my face from the ejection so gosh dang it that was crazy let's try that again hopefully we don't get another memory link so computer one mark zero and uh let's see here all right mark we're gonna get going right over mark uh t -Dub says oh. mark uh going to end up in traction if he yeah. Around any further, uh, <laughs> it didn't do any glasses. good. Uh, now, now that you've died, Mark, can I have your H six? <laughs> you, I will put you in the will. I will put you in the will wow. for it, my friend. Wow. <laughs> you just got to come over and get it. That's all. Wow. So, hey. so whoever gets there first gets it. Is that what I just heard? Yeah, <laughs> you're closer than he is. <laughs> yeah, all right, we're we're gonna not we're not gonna mess around. Uh, hopefully, let's get going, and we won't have that problem again. So, all right, let's see here. Salute. Danny, Col Danny Coltner has joined the chat. Out hey, loud. Danny. T-Dub said, Steve, only Salute. if I can have your H2. Good thinking, T-Dub. Good thinking. You need to get an H3, Steve. It's time for you to upgrade. I don't think you'll um, take that much more space. All right, we're about to do the cat launch, guys. And away we go. VR plot sim says, seems oh, fair. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. All right, we're going to go after that guy this time. Yeah, I don't know what was going on with the VR thing, because that is a problem when um, you, uh, when uh, it's lagging and I, you know, he gets behind me. I still should have been able to beat him, but it's all right. All right, now we get everything going. All right, here we go. Uh, gear is up, guys. So I have a question. Yep. When, uh, when pilots enter into uh, dog fights, do they turn off their navigation lights or do they leave them running? Oh, you turn them off. You go dark. Looks like I... I would. What the heck? Looks like I got a problem with the front end. That's All the doors are off. I'm showing off for you, Steve. I'm showing you how good a pilot I am so no, you don't lose any viewers to me. <laughs> Doing this oh, for you, wow. all right. Hold on, let's try this again. Were the doors open or are they missing? Uh, I I must have taken too long to get them up, and so they blew off on the on the launch. I was trying to get that crosshair on uh, so I can flip the switch, but I'll just do it with a hotkey this time, so we don't mess with it. All right, do the same thing. Plus, you can't ever get enough of those catapult launches, right, T Dub? We'll do the catapult, like the catapult launch again. Launches. Yeah, we're gonna do that again. Let's do it from. Uh, Let's try something different here. Let's go. Um, oh, all right. Salute. How about this view? Let's see what this is like. There we go. That's cool. I've actually never watched that before. There's the gear. I can see it coming up. All right, we got the gear up. Gear up, flaps up. Let's go. 
Now we'll get serious. That was kind of cool. <laughs> All right, we need to get radar going. Um, Foxy says, yeah. just noticed that fighter planes have mirrors. Yes. And the T Dub says, never too many, Mark. I know. Hey, Steve, have you been flying the new DCS patch, by the way? I am having a hell of a time not cratering my landing gear when I land on the carrier. Because I know they remodeled a lot of that. Uh, let's see here. Let's Prospect go out to 80. The mirrors are for uh, reverse parallel parking. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It, I thought it was to make sure you look good. Make sure you can do your makeup and all that stuff. While they're well, filming you. It's important to have the right eye shadow. It is. It is. All right. Get the bags ready to drop. Good evening, Sabrina. All right, so I'm going to do a call and see if we got any bogeys yet. We got a jump start on this guy this time. Request bogey dope. Let's see if we get a bearing on him. Okay, it's clean. All right. So we got a head start on them this time. We will have the advantage. VR Flotsam guy said as he confesses, he hasn't used ECS in a while. Plan to fix that soon. Yeah. Uh, since he'll be previewing the Phantom soon in a new VR headset. Ooh. <laughs> oh, a new is VR it an headset. expensive VR headset? I think I know exactly which one it is. <laughs> is it one that your mortals can afford? I don't know. I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think it is. Dang it. I'm almost certain it's not a headset mirror mode it's gonna, can uh, afford. Um, yeah, it's been interesting with this new mod. They have definitely changed. They changed the landing gear and all that. And, and this, the F-18 now has a lot more authority uh, on angle of attack. But, man, you bleed energy quick if you're not being careful. It's a different flight model for sure. It definitely is taking a little getting used to. And I've only flown it a couple of times, so I'm still getting used to it too. Um, so anyways, request bogey dope. We should be getting somebody. I think replied with a halo. Uh, so <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm not sure if that means that he's under an NDA and can't talk about it. Uh, I'm guessing that's what it means. And then, uh, play bomb says, uh, does it run? Does it run? Does it run? Does it run? Does wait? What? I, I guess I'm not understanding. I yeah, oh, it's I bright. Hold on, I gotta get my get my stuff going. Early warning. Oh, don't start messing up again. And Steve, I've been trying to get a little more active on your Discord. I hope you don't mind. Um, I've had a lot of your guys asking me questions, so I by no means want to, you know, go in there and, you know, <laughs> try to take it over or anything, but I, I'm trying to be a little more active. I'm not a big Discord guy, so it's it's kind of hard for me to get used to Discord. Um, VR flight sim guy says, VR footage looks great, by the way, Mark. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, if it wasn't for the leak, the plug-in leak. I got a memory leak that's causing OBS to crash about every, what, 15, 20 minutes, it seems like. Sounds like but that. Let's, uh, let's get a nice flyby here. Let's see, which one's flyby? I think it's this one. No, this one. That's not I, it. That's cool, I do though. Like, I do there it like is. Seeing the visuals of the, I do like seeing both the visuals of the headset and the visuals of the motion platform moving. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's nice. That's real. And your camera looks good, too. You've got, you've got, you've got a nice-looking video. Cool. Right? That's good. Yeah, I put my, my high-end camera on it because we ran out last time. It's plugged in now, so in theory it shouldn't run out of uh, it shouldn't run out of battery. All right, let's get our, let's see, Amram. Might as well get the sizing right because it's going to be small. We should have a bogey by now. Request a bogey dope. So I do have a little public service announcement because I, I want the F4 also. I actually pre ordered it. There he is. 92. 92. Oh, he's close too. Let's go get him. All right, 8,000 feet. Uh, get our elevation down. It's a little high. There, we should get him now. 
Uh, come on. Show me something. Show me the guy. So the F the uh, F4 that's coming out, the one that's coming out now is the Air Force variant. And again, I'm a Navy guy. I like carrier ops. So if you're into the Navy stuff, that mod module is coming out later. It's a separate module. I confirmed this with DCS. It is a separate module that you will have to buy separately. So if you are wanting to wait for the Navy not mod, do not buy the F4 that's coming out now. Um, 114. Okay. Uh, TW, TW says, Steve, do we have any bike trips coming up? And VR Flight Sim guy says, uh, you're always welcome, mate. Your knowledge is always appreciated. Feel free to post your videos on the Discord anytime. Ah, oh, thanks, Steve. Really appreciate that. I really do. One four. Shoot, oh. he was close. All right, we got to get Box. visual scanning out. I got to find him. There's Box a bogey says, somewhere. You know, what, you know, it would look cool if there was a space. Request bogey dope. VR. Uh, elite dangerous. <laughs> there you go. Hey, right there. You got it. We could do elite dangerous. Uh, where is this guy? I think he was way below me. We are quite some guys. It's T Dub. I will be One, posting a new Euro Fight Trip video soon. 243, 243. He's going after the AWACS, so we got to find him. There he is. Got him on radar. I think that's him right there. Let's see if that catches him. There we go. All right, we're going to dogfight a little bit now. Okay. Um, Here, let's put this as yeah, target data. Sure. T Dub says looking forward to watching it, Steve. Here are flight says we are flight sim guy. Uh, come one mark, we have faith in you. Thanks, man. I can't go down twice. That would be terrible. I mean, I could have picked him off with a missile easily, but but we got to we got to do this with guns. All right, I am going to drop the bags here in a second. As soon as I get close enough. Mono v. Mono, if it were. Yep. All right, let me level out. Pickle bags. All right, we just, we just lost a lot of gas. But that's okay. We got to get flying. All right, here he is. I think the... Big Doc is the AWACS. I think he's going after the AWACS. I think he's the little dot. Yep. So that's the AWACS up there. Yep, he's dropping flares already. Okay. Let's see if we can keep from either getting a... Uh... All right, there he goes. All right. We're going pretty fast. I don't like to use labels and stuff because I like it to be a little more realistic. So I just saw him. Where is he? There he is. There he is. Let's get, get, all right, come on, baby. Afterburner. There he goes. We should be able to just dominate this guy with the way this flies. Unless you stall out and go to 83 knots. That's. Not an idea. Great idea. Oh. All right. Yeah. I saw that in the chat. I'm not in the chat. I saw that in the live stream. Uh, Foxy yeah. says, hmm, should I get some popcorn to watch this? I think so, Foxy. We'll see. And again, I'm still I'm still trying to learn. The, the airplane is definitely handling a lot different with the new flight model, but that's not an excuse. It's just an observation. All right, come on. I mean, I could nail him with the Sidewinder easy, but again, I want to guns this guy. All right, here we go. I don't quite have the... Not quite pulling. I'm losing all my momentum. Come on, come on. Again, that's the thing. That AOA, it stalls like crazy. You can pull a lot of AOA, but it kills your airspeed. So let's get the airspeed... We are getting low. Is he going to hit the ground? Come on, come on, come on. 
That would still count as a swim, right? It, do, it would. Yep. You force them to navigate into the ground. Now I got to remember that we're low to the ground, so. Come on. Danny Kochner says I would have snapped my neck twice in all those movements. <laughs> all those movements. Man. Totally lost him on that one. <coughs> I'm tired of losing all my my airspeed. Is that him right there? I think it is. Or is that a ship? Oh, what we got? 21. Yep, that's him. 350. Don't let him get any shots on you. Rolling scissors, my friend. He's going, come on, flip it over. Flip it over, let's go. That might have been a bad move on his part. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Dang it. Watch that airspeed. Totally kill it all. Come on, come on. Man, he is ripe for a frickin' missile shot. Should I missile him? No. Gotta kill him with guns. A little closer. Oh, he might be. Is he boogie at home? This is afterburner just kicked in. Hold on. Missile him then. Take him out. Well, I'm gonna give it. See if I can get him on one more of these. I will have other opportunities. There he is. If I don't get him on this one, going over the top. God, he's so hard to see. Lost him somewhere. Where is he? Oh crap, lost him now. When you don't see him, he's probably behind you. Dirt cross, dirt cross, dirt cross, dirt cross. There he is. Watch those bullets. Uh. Sabrina, sorry if I'm making you sick, dear. All right, let's get a missile shot on him. How do you We're gonna run it. I prefer guns. Oh, I might get a good gunshot on him. He's just he's just out of guns range now, so it feels dirty doing a missile shot on him, but come on, come on. Come on, get it, get it, get it. Come on, lock up. Fox two. Maybe. Come on. Why are we not Fox 2-ing? Okay. I got no guns. What the heck? Hold on. That's not good. That's not good. See, he should be totally dead now. And I know exactly why, too. Hold on one second, guys. Must be that, must be that patch. No, it was because I wanted to show you guys the smoke screen last night. Uh, and so, so I went to, uh, I didn't realize, I thought it would still be both. So we need, we need Mark guns. Mark supposed to say it's the patch. Oh, it's the patch. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, patch, though. It's patch, right? Uh, let's see, weapon. No, no pilot see. error here. No, no. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not weapons release, right, Steve? It's, uh, it's just guns, right? Trigger. Yep. Oh, spacebar would have worked. All right, now he's toast. I hope. All right. Fox 2. There it is. Cheeky, cheeky. Toast. How you like me now? All right. Now, we got some F5s. Parachute. 
We got some F5s inbound now. So we'll get an eye on those. How are we doing for gas? Oh, crap. We're already down to 5,000 fuel. I burned a bunch on that one. Okay, let's see what we got here. So what the plan will be, I'm going to try to take out... I'm going to try to take one of the F5s out with a missile shot because there's a pair. Um, and then go guns on the second one. We'll see what we got here. So We, we should get a re request. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, VR flat sim guy says, there we go, scrap one. Splash one. Let's see if we can splash more than one. I'm going to run out of fuel is going to be the problem. <laughs> so Again? we could we could boogie back to the carrier. Um, request bogey dope. Let's see what we got here. Let's see, I'm sure they're airborne by now. If it's clear... Nope. Zero five six. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can get these guys quick. The problem is, once I take these guys out, then uh, the F the uh, Mig twenty nines come, and those guys are as fast as me. Twenty six. Sixty one. Hot. Lock them up. Our flight sim guy says, I got a dash now, Mark. Level the screen. Take care, buddy. Speak to you soon. Thanks, Steve. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good one, VR flight sim guy. Always cool when a celebrity pops by. Isn't that nice? It is. I li that's one of the neatest things. I really like that guy. He just, he seems like such an on honest, genuine, I just, I really like that guy a lot. I like, I like his content as well. Yeah, I share his viewpoint on a lot of the stuff. All right, we got to be careful with gas. Um, so do I try to take two on, kill one, and boogie home with the fuel that I got left? What do you think? Let's see if that gets us. See if that gets us back to where we need to be. I wonder if I said, don't touch that dial, if anybody in the, if would even know what I'm talking about in the chat. I bet you T-Dub would. He seems, to know, he seems to be on top of that kind of stuff. We're back, folks. Uh, come on. All right. So we'll make sure the stream is going before I continue. We, I paused uh, as soon as go. I heard the magic notes. Looks like this stream is back up. It looks like it's doing a little glitchy kind of stuff. Yeah, it might. There, it, now, now it's back up. There, now, now, it's, now it's working. All right, we, we paused where we were. So I will fix this. If you guys are enjoying this and we're going to do more of these, I will find a better plug-in for this. So uh, um, it's too bad because I really liked the plug-in allowed me to stabilize. It allowed me to crop it in really nicely. But, yeah, if it's going to crash every time, that's not a good thing. <laughs> that's, that's not ideal. All right, so we are back. Yes, you're back. All right, you guys ready? All right. Well, they did they decide if uh, engage two, engage one, and run, go get fuel and come back? What? Uh... All right, so we got one. I'm going to hit that. All right, Fox 2, we're going to get one out, and then hopefully see if that works, and then we'll go to guns on the other guy. See if that missile gets him. I'm hoping. It got him. All right. Go on this guy here. Go into guns. Now, these guys are a little more maneuverable. Uh, T-Dub is asking, Mark, what did you ask before the OBS uh, break? Uh, if you want me to engage both these guys or engage one and run back to the carrier since we're getting low on fuel. Um, yeah. If I can kill this guy real quick, we'll be in good shape.
I am going fast. Oh, hey, that's the ground. Let's not let's not crash into the water. That's a bad plan. Where did he go? Where did he go? That sun is just in a really bad spot. They put it there on purpose. Yeah. Ah, uh, what are we at? Three thousand. All right. There he is. I might need to missile shot this guy so I can have a chance to get back to the carrier. I would like to guns him, but. Where are you? There he is. Ugh. Crap, where'd he go? Totally lost him. All these reflections. <clears throat> Make sure he's not behind me. T Dub says he asks, uh, "Can you take out both? What are they flying?" F fives. Kind of the MIGs or the enemy MIGs from Top Gun. Oh, damn not, it! Not, not the fifth generation fighters, though, right? No, Top Gun, the original. The F five was what they used for. The enemy MiG 28s, I believe, is what they called them. Which there was no such thing. All right, where is he? I don't know if he's high, low. He should be off to the side here. Man, I don't see him. Talk as a heck is well, he? Here goes we are. Fuel fighting this guy. Yeah, I need to. I need. That's not the right answer. I need to. I need to missile him. You know what? Let's do this. Let's head back. And then he'll get behind me, and I can turn around. Because, yeah, we're going to run out of gas. We're so going to run out of gas. Before I can get back on the carrier. p -Dub says the F-5 is fast plane. Uh, but yeah. little fuel scores. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping we can maybe get away from him. If I suddenly explode in a ball of flame, you know I didn't get away from him. That's all for the fuel problem. It does solve the fuel problem. Um, Not in the most desirable way. Let's kill the ACM. So what plane are you interested in, Joe? I'm personally interested in the, the one you're flying, the Hornet, and I'm also interested in the uh, F-16. Yeah. I flew the F-16 when it was, uh, um, hold on, I get my tech in, uh, when it was like a freebie, and it was fun. I mean, it's such a little plane, and in VR, it really feels like a little plane. Let's see if I can get... All right, what do we got for tech in? Let's see. Kill the A-to-A -A right now. Um... Oh, air to air. Hold on. Tack in. Air to air. I'm not getting it. He must be gone. He might have got in trouble. Man, that F5, I think, is still back there. Well, we're going to try to get back home. All right, tack in. Not air to air. Fifth, uh. Isabel is the 73, I believe. That doesn't look right. Uh, favorite fighters are the, the Raptor and the Stealth Fighter. Oh, yeah. The Raptor is a frickin'. Yeah, that's an awesome plane. That is an awesome plane for sure. I don't know. That must be a data link. That I got. I turn the date. I might not turn the data leak on. That would be helpful. What does that do? Uh, it feeds your panels all the data from like the AWACS and stuff, so you can get a better overview of what's going on. Where are we at with fuel? Two thousand. All right. That's all right. Looks like he's. Looks like he's away from me. 
Um, yeah, okay. I think we're good. Question is, can I land and not crater the gear? That'll be the trick. So you see, I've got my tachyon set to the carrier. So I'm basically 40 miles out from the carrier. So we should be okay. We should be able to make it at 2,000 pounds. Maybe come out of afterburner might help. That, that might help a little bit. Afterburner uses like four times the fuel. All right. So what's kind of cool in these, you can go to this uh, FPAS FAPS. And so it tells me to tack in. I should have a thousand pounds left when I get there. So this gives you all your information about your optimum range and all that. So there's a lot of really cool stuff. I, the thing I love about the Hornet, I love having the displays and being able to choose what you want where. I think that's so helpful. All right, so we're uh, 31 Dirt, miles. So Dirt Prospecting says, uh, looks like that helicopter will be on the way. I think it's. I think I'm going to land. I think what I'll do is probably crash it into the deck as far as... Again, I've catered the landing gear every time. So I get the plane down, but the landing gear is folded up under the chassis because of the. I'm just not used to how it lands now. I'm landing how I used to, but... Yeah, I know the fuel's low, dear. That's why we're heading back to, to base. Um, let's put the tack in up here. That way we can see what's going on. So he's at 45. So yeah, that F5 can't catch me. Oh, she says, uh, but my favorite plane of all time is the Ankov AN-225. I'm not familiar with that one. Isn't that that super huge uh, one that got uh, somebody destroyed in the hangar? Like the, it's like one of the largest airplanes ever built? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. All right, hold on. I got to do a call in open comms. Sorry, got to wait a second. Team speak, you have to give it a second before you can say the command. Open comms. F7. Oh, no, that's not what I want. F11. I want F5. F5. F1. F1. Report inbound. F1. All right, let's see if we can get this carrier landing in. <coughs> okay, BRC 7. So I gotta get the altimeter. 2993. 2993, we're good. Baseline recovery, so we need to set our course to 7. C select, go 7, enter. There, we got a course line of 7. <sighs> set. Foxy, set says the Foxy says it's a huge Russian plane, and yes, it was that one. Okay. And, uh, Danny Kaufner saying, team speak or voice attack? Both right now. Team speak. Did I say team speak? Team speak is what I'm talking to Joe on. Voice attack is what I'm using for comms to give it commands. And I only use the voice attack for my communications. I don't use it for any gear or any of that stuff. It's only for voice communications because I like the realism. Um, F2. F2. All right. We've got 1,000 pounds. All right, there she is. You see that little blinky light? So it's got a light on the back that kind of gives you your lineup. Now, I am not the best at carrier landings. I do them completely wrong. My goal is to get the plane on the deck. So that's kind of my goal. All right, so we're going to turn on the ILS. ILS on. Uh, channels 11. All right, and then turn it on. Yeah, we're not too far off. About the right glide slope. So this is one of my favorite things in uh, 
flight sims. I love carrier landings. All right, we are definitely going fast. Got to be under 300 knots to lower the gear. You want to kind of get your get out and get dirty as soon as you can. All right, so the gear's down. So you're checking for green lights. Left and right are down. Nose is down. Just to give you an idea. There we go. We are coming in high and fast. Get down here. P-Dub says, uh, Foxy, if I remember correctly, Russia bombed it in its Ukraine hangar at the start of the war over there. And then T-Dub just progressed to say, Mark, you have the ball. <laughs> Hornet ball. We'll see. There's, there's, there's the, uh, see, Hornet ball. So you want to be about 400 feet per mile out is about the right. I'm a little high, but I actually, I think I always come in just a little bit higher because I don't like crashing into the back of the carrier. That tends to ruin my day. I'm a little off here too. How are we doing for fuel? We got a thousand pounds, so we got enough. We got enough to go around if we need to. Yep, a little fast coming over. Get lined up a little bit better. I feel like everybody's watching me. Oh, I don't wave I'm off. No, the delay. we ain't, we ain't, we ain't waving off. Oh, I'm over. Yeah. All right, we got enough to go around. All right, that's that's what you're supposed to do. I'm just doing it the right way. You're supposed to do a flyover, make sure the deck is clear before you actually land. You're following protocol. Yeah. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna keep turning. You see a little arrow in my HUD. I'm gonna keep turning until that's pointing directly down, because then I'm down wind or downstream or down leg whatever the hell they call it and then get a fly out keep going come on here's the carrier oh I think I'm just 400 knots what the heck shouldn't be going that fast I may have just torn the gear off again <laughs> that's gonna be but we'll see. harder yeah yeah it might all right flaps are down all right let's see what we got here so abusive on the aircraft. This is why they don't let real pilots do live streams from the aircraft, because it's distracting. <laughs> At least. I bet. I, yeah, that's the only reason. The only reason. Alright, come on. That's a little bit better. That feels a little bit better. Prospecting says, speed! You're going to damage the gear. Okay. Thank you! Yeah, downwind, so the enemy don't smell you coming. Uh, P-Dub says if you, if you squint, it's <laughs> like F-18 Interceptor on the Amiga. Oh, see, that was, oh, that was my game, nice. baby. Uh, Amiga rules. That was my game. That's, that's why it's like a dream. I didn't want to bring it up because somebody asked me earlier. That was the dream. I played F-18 Interceptor like crazy. And that's why when I'm in this doing this right now, it is literally a dream come true. It is just exactly what I want to do. I got some weird stuff going on right now with the motion comp station or something. It's it's kind of warping me around. Again, not an excuse, just an observation. Come on, baby. We're gonna not try to put her down. Just yep. Come on, baby. Oh, that might be wrong. <laughs> hey. Oh, that didn't feel good on the landing, though. Hmm. Let's take a look, shall we? Yeah, see, that's been my, pretty much my par for the course. See see how those wheels look? That's, that's not good. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, well, let's get out of the, we're going to need a new plane because I broke the wheels on this one. So <laughs> Isn't that... Isn't that just like uh, they need to adjust the toe in on that or something? Yeah, the, it's it's got a little 
It's a little out of alignment. We're just going to roll over here. We're just... I was going to refuel and start again, but uh, go after those guys. But I don't think I can do that now, so... All right, do you guys want to see some bombing? Do we want to go do some bombing? Foxy says Amiga, and then T-Dub says uh, 1980s computer. Prospecting yeah. says old computer system ahead of its time. Mismanaged company killed it. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> Prospecting says, is there supposed to be smoke? No comment. I played the fifth on that one. I, I'm on the deck, and the plane isn't that damaged. It's just a little damaged, so... It's repairable. Uh, this is it a win. Is, it is totally repairable. All right. So, guys, uh, old school CCIP bombing or laser guided bombing? What do you want? Let's go do some a bombing run real quick. Let's see here. Probably should start. O I should start OBS again before we start. Just <laughs> to keep probably it. Would be a, probably would be probably be a good idea right before you kick it off. Just to make. Sure. Yeah, we might do that real quick. I'll just kill the. Uh, We'll get in here. Actually, that's a good idea. All right. Let's find out what they want to do because they might have to rearm. So we want lasers or we want just old school bombing. Ooh. Hello. Covered up the uh, covered up the IR sensors. So we'll see what people want to see. Uh, put a Foxy's pot first on. jump in that says old school so far. Old school? Old school. That's what okay. I hear so far. It's one that's what we're set school. up first. And then... See what everybody else has to say here. And I think we I'll kill OBS real quick and fire it back up. That way we know we're <clears throat> not in the critical moment and have an issue. I do need like a little pause screen or something technical. Well, if the stream stops, so it doesn't matter stream, if I have yeah. one or not. It's, yeah, it doesn't matter. All right. You watch the chat. Everybody chat. I'm going to kill OBS. I will be right back. Um, yep. So and the stream's gonna go dead for a split second while I reset that. I said, I said, gonna uh, reboot OBS. Stay on. Be right back, or be back in a sec. Yeah. So right now we should still be on. You and it does not like stop. There it goes. Is it? Okay. It, the, yeah, OBS is. Uh, you got the spinny wheel going right this second. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting lagged like, like crazy. Ooh, boy, boy, howdy. Whoa. Come on. Says, night, night carrier landing. He'll fry right into the hangar bay. I can, we can Kulpner try says it. Old. Kulpner says old school. Foxy uh, VR gets more viewers than other games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're just making comments here. You gonna you gonna take a quick break real quick while it's restarting yeah. or Yeah, I'm still trying to right now it's it's really slow. I don't know what are you seeing? Are you seeing anything or is it totally paused out? It uh, it's kind of stuttering. It's back up and Yeah, cuz I actually haven't killed OBS yet cuz it's I I'm in stutter right now too, so So yeah, as soon as this OBS drops off, it, it's doing something. It says it's I don't know. -dub. This is a mess. T Dub <laughs> says, We are the world. We are the Looks like that might have turned off. I have no idea how long these little lights are gonna we're gonna work. Still nothing? Or are we back? Still nothing. No, we're not yet. No, oh, really. Yeah, there's a there's a good there's a there's it's probably almost a ten second lag today, I think. Huh. Well it says I got the OBS OBS is up and going again, so I got that going again. Well, I guess let's give it a said, second. T-Dub says he's back. Okay. But I don't, I'm still getting the spinny wheel. Oh, now you're back. Okay, yep. Okay. I, got you. I was going to say, I feel like we should be. I went ahead and restarted uh, DCS just to make sure we don't have any any issues there. Get recentered here. All right. All right. So we are back. T-Dub says we're yep. back. Yeah, T-Dub says we're back. Foxy says you're back. All right. Everybody else, to, everybody else got a good stream? Good to be back. Now I just got to get the game going. Hold on. You know, this is kind of like our last live stream. It just takes a little little effort here. Working out I all the kinks and the bugs. It adds character. That's what it does. Adds, character. It, it makes you know that, that it's truly live. 
This is it's not truly live. Hand recording. This isn't. That's uh, right. All right, expert, going back doing some bombing. Well, thank you guys for putting up with all the technical issues. All right. Oh, I was going to ask you. So, did the wind actually make things better? Like when I turned the wind off, you said it was sounding really bad. I'm no, assuming it, sound, it had. Sound, yeah, better without. Okay. The, better without the wind so high. So yes. it was blowing. It was probably blowing right into the into the microphone. The then I'll have to remember that when I live stream to turn all the wind stuff off. Okay, we are back where we were. Okay, so we are bombing. Uh oh, what? T Dub says it's real. Unfortunately, lol. <laughs> Wow. Well, you know, T Dub's been pretty nice today. So chance, he? he's been nice for the majority of the stream, considering how bad we did. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut him some slack. I'm gonna cut him a little slack here. So, and if you're not enjoying this, we can always blame blame Daryl because it's Daryl's fault. So, do you guys yeah. like this stuff? Do you want to see more of it? Where are you guys at? What do you think? Obviously, get it to where it's not crashing all the time, but. uh yeah, let me know what you think. All right, so now you'll see we have, instead of missiles, we have a bunch of bombs out here. So, same kind of thing. We're going to go salute. Here comes the carrier launch. All right. And away we go. He's enjoying it. Cool. All right, so this time we're going to go to the left. Oh, that's so cool, though. All right. So I'm going to... We're going to try to stay low. So what we're going to do is we'll bust through the mountains again. Um, yeah, let's go down here. We'll go bust, bust some mountains, and then we'll go find the target. Danny Kultner says, love it. Foxy says, I like anything y'all play. Cool. <laughs> Tanny says, strip poker? <laughs> well, I, I within don't, reason, I don't right? We would, but it would get us demonetized. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It might open up some new avenues of monetization, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Mark's only fan page. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Including Mark. Let's go this way. I'm being indecisive. Uh, I don't really have a path through here. I'm just kind of, just kind of guessing. Let's go all the way over. Oh boy, this could be close. All right, sorry. The winky symbol. T Dub says D monetized. D monetized. Hey, that could be a new T-shirt. D monetized. All right. Prospecting since he plays Pope, Pope Stripper. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure how to take that. There you go. Again. All right. All right. We're going to pop up here. All right. We're going to go vertical, get some. I got to get the bombs set up. Uh, let's go see. All right. So there's an Iranian uh, terrorist group that has taken over a factory. So we've been tasked with going and bombing them. We have a group of. Yeah, no, they don't have any fighters. Um, and we've got a special forces uh, team. As soon as I can find my cursor. Come on, cursor. There it is. Maybe. Oh, man, it used to work so well, and now it takes forever to find it on the first go. All right, wait. I saw it. just saw it. I see it. It's, like, right there. All right. I thought I saw it. Anyway, so we have some special forces in the area. You see the red smoke? They're marking the target with red smoke. So um, if I can ever get my cursor so I can operate my jet. There we go. All right, cursor. So we need to go to air to ground. Uh, we've got 10 bombs. All right, so let's go um, set them up, fuse them, nose. Use instant. Ooh. And we're on CCP. So it's, it's um, CCIP is constantly calculated impact point or computed, constantly computed, whatever. So it's got a little symbol that basically shows me where the bombs are going to drop. 
um, and they've got that red thing. So we're going to start off. We're going to hit. Let's do. Um, uh, what do we want to do? Do we want to go after the big building first? Let's go. You know what? There's some buildings in front. Let's start with that. So we're going to go quantity four. We're going to drop four of these. We're going to drop them in singles. And we're going to do them about 130, 135 feet. 135 feet apart. Um, so there's a row of houses in the front. Let's see how... We'll see what we can do here. Got to get lined up. So what I'm looking for is at the bottom of that line, there's going to be a... There's going to be a little crosshair. Oh, are we good? All right, because it's getting exciting. We're coming in for the run. So I got four buildings on the front. I don't even know if I got my 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 time or my stuff right, but that X. Once that X gets on top of them, we're gonna drop them. Oh wait, we got to be armed first. I'm like, why didn't they drop? See this little switch right here? You gotta arm that. There you go. So there's the four little houses in front that we're gonna try to knock out. Good job, dude. Way to not arm the system. That's looking uh -oh. good, too, on that one. Oh, did we drop again? No, no, no. I was uh, only about what you just said. Forgot to arm uh, the system. Yeah, it's always good to arm your weapons if you're going to drop bombs. All right, here we go. Still got the red smoke. This will make us a little lighter, too. Circling back down. Yeah, it's pretty well lined up. Go over a little bit more. Right there. All right, let's see what we did. Let's see if they hit. Come on, baby. Not bad. Oh, when you said bombing, I thought bombing run, I thought you were going to be flying a B-2 or a B-52. No! This is a fighter attack aircraft. We can bomb with this, too. Um, that would be War Thunder that I've done those on. Alright. So we got the one. You saw how big that uh, factory was. What do you think? How many bombs does that thing? We've got 500 pound bombs. We've got um, five left. How many bombs do you think that thing needs? The big boy. Oh, golly. I got no clue. How, how many you uh, got left? We got five. We got one. Let's see. We got one of those little houses left. Let's see here. Um, I'm thinking, what, at least three? Three? We could do three. three. For the big factor? Let's do three. Yep, I like that. Let's go. T Dip says nice shot. Thank you. Not bad. You think three? Let's do that. Drop them. Uh, we'll drop them slightly spaced, like 10 feet apart, just so they ripple. Uh, 18 feet. Sure. All right. Coming down. Hit in a nice angle here and bombs away. This should see him hit. Come on. Well, it wasn't enough to destroy it, but it definitely hit it. Uh, well, we got three more. Hit it with another three. Sure. All right. Uh, roll it over. Go this way. Ooh, you're a little crooked and the smoke's obscuring. Going for the smoke stacks, hopefully. All right. Bombs away. 
Hopefully that hits. Uh, hit some hit. Yeah, it looks like it's more on fire. Wow, that's a that's a tough old building. I don't know if we missed. I think we hit the corner of it. Yeah, let's do a we'll do a little BDA battle damage assessment here. We definitely got three of the buildings on the first run. I can't quite tell. I can't tell if we missed and just hit the corner of it. It's a lot of smoke. I think we got the corner. Hear that? We landed just short. We might have hit just short of it. Not successful. All right, let's go see if Mark can land back on the carrier. He kept asking our droplet meaning is allowed DCS. Our what? Sorry. Our droplet munitions allowed in DCS. I believe so. I, I haven't messed with them, but yeah, I think I think we have all anything that this plane really could carry. I think they have. It's got J dams. It's got laser. It's got uh, Mavericks. Uh, and I think it does have cluster also, um, I believe. Yeah, you can actually... This is why I like DCS over Microsoft Flight Sim, because I know they have a lot of planes in Microsoft Flight Sim, but you can't blow stuff up. So I really enjoy the uh, the whole combat and bombing and dogfighting. Um, it's it's kind of my thing. 71... Home fuel. Well, the good news is we're not very far from the carrier now. So, open comms. F5. F3. F1. All right, altimeter two nine nine three. It's always it. Uh, BRC is seven. So hopefully, uh, one of the cool things, if you guys see when I'm like flying the surge on this, is what it feels so cool. So right now I'm in full afterburner. I'm gonna kill it. And you, you can feel that whole thing moving you forward and back. That's one of the things I love about the H6. It just, you know, the cat shots and that surge is so cool. Foxy says, will you stream more zero hour? Yeah. Yeah, we definitely do that. I actually, Daryl and I took on a two hards, and uh, we finally won. I actually took on two hards by myself. It was hard. I had to do it about 20 times, but I finally beat two hard players by myself. So that was that was kind of fun. Um, yeah, I love Zero Hour. We got another one called Company of Heroes too. That's that's fun as well. But I've been really enjoying Zero Hour. I've been playing the heck out of it. So we still got to figure out how to get Joe wrapped into there. We've got to figure out the whole network thing. But uh, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you like Zero Hour, we can definitely do that some more. What's the consensus on Enshrouded, everyone? Are you are we kind of moving past Enshrouded? Do you guys still want to see that one? We want to wait until it gets a little more content down the road since it's early. Um, what do you guys think? And Elite Dangerous. Um, we can also do Elite Dangerous just as easy as we can do DCS. So. Uh, T-Dub has asked the chat. He says, chat, while Mark flies back. Please put down your call sign entries for Mark. Oh. I already have my call sign, but go ahead. This uh, should. Then, this is not going to be good for my ego. I'm pretty yes. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Hey, but you know what? It F2. Be dirt farmer, right? It's, yeah. That is uh, true. Danny, Danny Coulter, Coulter says that's USA. Yep. I am US. It looks like a new call sign for Mark in the chat. Wow. What was the call sign? Well, yeah, there's, I'm still waiting to read what they, what they pop up. And then I'll tell you what my call sign that I've been going by forever. Yeah. Yeah, Mark, uh, Dirt Pro Washington Dirt Prospect, he says, you don't assign your own call sign. And then he says, you are given it. Yeah, that's what they're doing now. Yeah, now it's everybody's chance to give Mark a call sign. Look at that. Yep. 
Well, this is a fun little thing. Thank you for this, guys. <laughs> Adrian should know me pretty well. He should probably come up with a really good one. I guess I really should start getting this thing conditioned to land. I'm all flustered over the call sign. Geared in. Oh, I guess it could turn on the ILS. Eh. All it does is tell me what to do. All right, ILS. There we go. Ooh, I'm a little below glide slope. Just a little. Let's get up there. So ideally, this thing, um, you're supposed to come in at about a five degree. This is the proper angle. And if you're on glide slope, you actually will be coming in at about eight degrees because you got about a three degree three degree glide slope into the carrier and then if you're pitched up at five you're hitting the deck at eight degree angle which is what the uh, hook is actually designed for uh, Washington Guard Prospecting says he'll he says I, I'll refuse myself uh, Foxy <laughs> says Mark's call sign should be challenge me <laughs> yeah that's yeah that's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be yeah uh, even, even tying it close to the Challenger name, I don't know if that's a that's a good thing or not. No, there is that. If I had to give myself a call sign right now, I'd give it Crater, because <laughs> I crater. tend to, <laughs> yeah, because I tend to always crater the landing gear anymore. Lately, no, we're not really lined up. Come on. Dan, Danny's asking, uh, Danny Keltner, I meant. You played against two mediums as USA or GLA or he's oh, talking about in zero. Yeah, hour. yeah. Daryl, oh, you should always pay attention when you're landing. That's going to be a bolter. Um, all right, I'm not going to overspeed the landing gear this time, Adrian. I'm going to pay attention. Uh, yeah, I was uh, US. I like the Air Force General. I've been really enjoying him. Shocker. <laughs> um, Daryl was the super uh, super weapons general, and we set him on randoms. And what was it? I think it was, I think it was a Toxin GLA and a Stealth GLA that came up, I think. And then last night I played against a China, um, China Nuke, and a regular China, and it was, uh, I was doing really good until they got all their nuclear weapons, <laughs> and then they just obliterated me because I took over the center area of a map, so all my stuff was really clustered close. So I was pretty much holding my own up until the point they launched nukes, multiple nukes on me, and they pretty much wiped out my base within, you know, five seconds. It was like, ah. So I just didn't get my defense. But I was able to hold that center position um, with conventional weapons. Uh, they had to get their nukes out to, to take me out. So I'm going to play some more. Um, but, yeah, I, I am really enjoying Generals. So, Adrian, thank Jesse again for mentioning that because... I'm glad I picked that one up. That was a lot of fun. All right, come on. We are right on the right glide slope now. Now well, we're a little low, but come on. Just about right. I can see the ball. Danny also come says, uh, also install the zoom out mod. Oh, yeah, that helped a ton. Oh, I'm going to overshoot it just slightly now. All right. We might be in good shape here on this one, guys. Maybe. If we don't hit the back of the boat, it's still a little high for the glide slope, but this is looking promising. I think we got it. Hey, come on. I was going to say, we have to catch that one. I don't think I cratered the gear on that one. Hold on. Whoa, look at that. Well, that's kind of cool. All right. So what we can do. Mark, uh, T-Dub says, Mark, one shot. Uh, I know. <laughs> one shot. Well, he says, well, in your last name, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Shimmerman? Shireman. Shireman, sorry. That's all right. I've been called worse. All right. Dogfight or more bombing, guys? we still got some planes flying out there. 
Come on. I got to reload this thing since it's still flying. Since I landed it without crushing the gear. That's the first time I've not crushed the gear on this game since the uh, since the patch. So I'm quite pleased about that. Nice. All right. Tell me what I need. What you want me to arm it with? Open comms. Go ahead. Let's see here. Open comms. Dirt, uh, Danny's laughing and dirt washing. Eleven. Dirt. F eleven. Washing dirt prospecting says. Have you looked at the offering for internet play since the official multiplayer servers are long dead? I have not. I was. I well, I have a little. There's one called Game Ranger and stuff like that. We might look at doing something like that. Yeah. Um, F one. All right, dog fighting or more bombing, guys? What do you want? Because we can go after some of those planes still. I can change the loadout here if I want to. Get fuel me up. I bet you, I'm going to guess everybody's going to say dog fighting, but we'll see. I'm, uh, I'm surprised you haven't gotten more response for for uh, call sign names from the chat. I know. I'm surprised. Yeah, I, I thought that that had been I thought that had been flooded with stuff. P Dub asked, "Which line did you catch?" Three. Did you see it? The three wire. It was that was the three wire, baby. It was up. Showed it right in the corner. I'll show you when we're done. It'll show you which one I landed on. Um, let's see. What do we want? We got six aims, two aim sevens, uh, two fuel. Is that what we Foxy's want? Foxy's got a vote for bombing. Bombing. Okay. That'll work too. I I was just I just assumed. Uh, let's go with a flare. Let's go with uh, let's do some laser bombing. What do you guys think about that? Some laser bombing. Request refueling. See if they, they give us a a targeting pod and see if I can remember how to do that. <laughs> it's been a while. Because there are they're still at that facility. There was the one building we didn't hit. Um, and then there was also the, um, we've got two, I think, outposts on the back side that we could hit. So, hopefully we're still live. I heard Joe time out. Oh, wait, I'm hoping, this, uh, are we still here? Disconnected, now we're back. So I guess, okay. I'm having, I guess I'm having internet problems here. Yeah, you, you might be having them too. All right. So you can see the fuel's coming up. And we should get our new ordinance. So yeah, we'll go bomb. We'll go do some laser bombing. The flare is kind of fun. I'm gonna turn on the flare though. So this gets a little crazy with laser bombing. Oh, I can't turn on until I get a pod on here. Well, cool. I'm glad you like the bombing stuff. It's kind of fun. This is kind of cool. Um, so in this screen, you're gonna see a flare, which is forward-looking infrared, and it looks just like a lot of the footage that we see on the news. That's what just amazes me. It's so awesome. Uh, T-Dub says, give it a go. And uh, Foxy says, laser sounds cool. And Prospecting says, yep. We'll do that high, that stuff that Maverick talks about. They've been bombing targets from 30,000 feet. <laughs> dropping bombs without danger. That's what we'll do. So... They're still fueling us up, so this thing holds about ten thousand pounds. So you can see there we're at fifty eight right now. So we'll take a couple. Of, so yeah, any well we got a few minutes. Any other questions about the sim or anything? Or uh, wow, look, I'm parked on that line. I hardly even meant to do that. That was just natural. So there it is. Danny There's Col the carrier. Danny Coltner says nightly laser bombing. Nightly? Well, I can't change the time. We could wait. <laughs> so, I do need to go do a night a night deal. Night carrier landing. I don't know if I have one of those set up or not. we got to do some air-to-air -air refueling, though. That's the other challenging thing. It's not very fun to watch on the motion platform, though, because it's like it doesn't move much when you're trying to fly. All right, so we still got fuel coming in. So I'm curious from the chat, are more people watching the motion platform move or more people watching the uh, the actual gameplay? That is a great question. I personally like seeing both, but just because I'm interested doesn't mean that everybody else is. <coughs> they probably just watch the motion platform because the gameplay is probably making them sick with all my head movement. 
Is Sabrina still here, or did we make her nauseous and she had to leave? Because I haven't got an update on what's for dinner yet. No, we haven't heard from her yet. Um, Danny says, LOL, to see uh, Laser and NGV, NVG. Mm. And then uh, T-Dep says, sorry, did you answer my earlier question about the joystick position? I didn't see a question about the joystick I, position. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear that. All right, we're almost well, done with fueling. And uh, Prospecting says he watches the game, and T-Dep says he watches both. What was the question right. about the joystick? About, about the joystick position. Now we'll see him put the bombs on. Yeah, I didn't hear that one. I didn't see it. Let me scan back up. Man, I love this game. I love this game so much. I love flight simulators. <laughs> this is so cool. Alright. Oh, there we go. There's one laser. How are we doing over here? Got a couple laser bombs on. There we go. All right, we got some bombs. Take a look. Let's see what we got. Foxy says, watches both. All right, looks like we got we got eight. Laser got it, and there's the T-pod. So this is what you're going to see, this little pod down there. That's what lets us uh, shoot the laser and all that stuff. So it's been a while. Forgive me if I screw this up. It's, it's quite a process to use that. All right, so I got to turn the FLIR on. FLIR on. Um, laser. And, oh, Joe, it's been a while. I think that's all I need for now. All right, so now we got to hook back up to the catapult. All right, Danny, what was the question before Danny, we go? Danny Kupner is asking, in the A-10, can you see the laser when you put on night vision goggles? I don't know, but I'd imagine you could. I, I, cause, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, 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 I would imagine because they do have night visions that you night vision goggles you can actually equip while you're in here. So. Prospect right. says, uh, "Speaking of dinner, gotta go eat later, y'all." All, All right, later, Adrian. Thanks, man. Okay, let's. Um, so now we got to hook back up. So what we have to do is tell them we want to relaunch. So we're gonna open comms by going. Open comms. Okay. F8. Question when you're ready. Okay. I'm just going to tell them to get in position here. Yep. F7. And they'll get in position. All right. Go for it. Uh, TW asked, when flying the F18 uh, with the stick in the F16 position to the right, do you ever feel disconnected uh, with the screen on the uh, with the screen joystick being in the center once in a while sometimes in fact there'll be times like I'll look down and do this like I'm reaching for it because I, I totally lose where I'm at but I've always flown with a side stick because on the computer in the old days before I had a motion platform I always had my keyboard in front of me I had my throttle to one side of the keyboard and the stick on the other side of the keyboard so this is very natural for me to fly like this so it doesn't it doesn't really mess with me because I've I've done it for so long. What I, I do kind of wish I had a center stick because when I'm trying to do things with this hand, like the mouse, and I'm trying to hold something, I have to come over and kind of do this number versus a center stick. It would be a lot easier to maintain, you know, swap hands with. But but not. it hasn't really been that big of a problem for me. So, all right. So we are, okay, so we got to move forward. All right, we got fuel. We're ready to go. I think Joe's got some Internet problems going on too. Okay, so we're going to start moving forward. Um, we want to set trim again. Uh, let's see. Half on that. Set my takeoff trim. Yep, you must be having some network. Hopefully we're still running, aren't we? Hopefully. All right, so we're going to ease forward. So the director tells us, okay, go forward. And if I get way off, he'll tell me to come over. See? I was straight, but I want to show you that. So, saying go straight. And then you're going to see a bump here. This is what amazed me in the motion platform. So, you're going to see the platform jar here. Okay, so I stop. That wasn't the jarring. So, now they got to come up and do their thing. This is what makes the super carrier module so cool. 
So they're going to come up and get ready. So he's telling me now to lower the, the bar, the launch bar. So i got to lower that. So you look back up at him. And he says, uh, I know it shows the laser. That's why I asked uh, for a nightly laser bombing mission. And then uh, T-Dip says, yes, uh, still streaming. Okay. All right. So now he's telling me move forward. This is where you're going to see something kind of cool. So I got that little shuttle under there. And watch, this is so cool. I don't know if what it looks like compared to what it feels like. But I go up, and I'm going to hit it. And it's like, see, I can feel that. And then I got a power over the top of it. Ugh. Oh, okay, that was extreme. I didn't hit it hard enough. <laughs> there we go. Whoo! <laughs> that was, so that's the extreme on my settings in SRS. Because that gets very violent. It normally is just a bump, but I think I got perched on it and when I do that it throws me around like that so um, so now we're hooked up and uh, you can see here so they got the the bar on it and all that look at that beautiful shot okay so maybe we'll, we'll watch from that shot um, so now I got a power up let's see what's the caution check trim I did check trim we should be good wait he didn't to pull that back up. I don't remember him telling me to pull that back up. Okay. So we're going to go full burner. Let's take a shot on the outside. Salute. Let's see if he actually salutes even. Oh, check that out. <laughs> Alright, here we go. I've never watched it for this shot. This looks cool. Oh. Oh, how freaking cool is that? Look at that beautiful bird. Oh, man, look at that. That's cool. All right. Cockpit. <laughs> All right. I liked that <laughs> a lot. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to get some altitude because we're going to go bomb that same spot. Um, we won't have the smoke, so I'm going to have to remember what that's like. But um, All right, we're going to go air to ground. And then I've got to go over here now and turn this to flare. And you're going to see the pod. And then i got to remember how to do all this. Um, so have got to get it out. Okay, there we go. Ah, DD. Let's see, there's that. All right, so now you can see. So I can actually move. I can slew the pod. I've got my infrared. You can see it's looking at mountains and stuff. And um, that's what we're going to use for the laser. Now, so for the bombs, I think we'll use, let's do two at a time. I'm armed this time. Um, actually, let's see here. So I'm gonna, i got to put a code in. So the lasers use a code, and the code is designated usually s defaults to six, 1688, and I'll show you that in a second. Oh, maybe I'm not set yet. Oh, wait, there's, yeah, 1688. Hold on, maybe i got to select this. Come on, code. Uh Joe, I need to get uh, your impression of the H3 catapult effect compared to the H6 surge. Yeah. I said, we'll do. Get, getting closer to getting it going. Yeah, how is that coming along, by the way? Oh, A, a little see. slower than, than what I wanted to. I've had some situations, a few drawbacks here and there, but uh, it's okay. going good. So you can step through that and do all the moms, but there's a trick here if you don't have any of them selected and you hit code, because you're, otherwise you're going through and doing them all. You go one, six, eight, eight, enter. And then now, when I select them, they should all have, you see one, six, eight, eight. Huge time-saving measure there, uh, being able to do that. Now what I'm gonna do, I think we'll drop them in pairs. So I'm gonna drop, we're going to do two at a time. Gosh, this has been a while. Uh, multiples. 
of two. Yeah, all right. So now you can see on the screen it says quantity two, multiples of two. Um, where the hell are we? I gotta get a idea of where the space is. So we're now at 20,000 feet. Um, and I gotta find that stupid base. And I don't, the clouds look like they might be obscuring it a little bit. Um, so yeah, we're good there. I think that's all we need for the trim or for that. We're in auto mode. Uh, make sure we're fused. Fuse instant. Okay. All right. So the trick here now is to use this little um, camera and try to find. All right. So there's. You gotta look for landmarks. Um. Yeah, those clouds are in the way. So we'll get over the clouds. Let's see, there's a... So there's a little dot. I don't know if you can see it. It's a really small dot at the uh, front. As I slew this around, that dot moves around the airplane, and that kind of gives you an idea of where the, ta the teapot is looking. So, like, right now, the dot, real small dot's right in front of the plane. Um, and so I can pull it back this way and kind of move it around and get an idea of where it's looking. And then if you ever get totally lost, you hit this VVSLV, and that basically forces it to go straight in the front, kind of like a snowplow would, so you can always come back and reacquire what you're trying to do. All right, looks like we might have some luck. All right, there's there's some towns down there. Um, I know it was on a roadway. So we'll just have to get a little closer and see what we got. It might take me a pass or two to find this this thing. All right, there's those there. So now I'm past the clouds. Go ahead. External view of the pod? Uh, yeah. So it's right here. And I don't know, it should as I move it. it I've never tried this before. Yeah, see? That's kind of cool. So that's me slewing it around, so you can see it actually rotating, doing a lot of stuff I've never messed with before. So that this simulator is just so cool with what they do. Um, hope you don't have uh, vertigo. Here's one way to find out where that is. Oh, I think it's okay. So it's right in front of that building there. Okay, going back in. Um, all right, I think it's right in front of us actually. see here there's a road there it is all right so once I get that I want to lock this into position so we had this right here was the one that we um, that we didn't hit yet so I've got to turn the laser on so this is as you do this every time you got to arm the laser and basically that see that steering cue so it says I'm getting close. I'm like within three miles, or yeah, three miles of the target. So what you do is you want to be kind of straight and level. This is how you do laser bombing. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Did we? I think I think it's a me thing. I don't know. The screen looks like okay. All right, we went too far. All right, that's okay. Because you can see, I we're right over it now. So I still have that designated. So I just got to go out a little bit farther. P Dub says MiG twenty one. Yeah, that was the MiG twenty one. That was the one that shot me down that first one. So those guys are still out there flying that way. Um, that's why we can go engage them. So he just landed because he basically went up. He probably destroyed the AWACS and then came back. Probably patrolled until he ran out of fuel and came back. <clears throat> so now those F five should be getting airborne. They'll fly out until they uh, basically lose a target or whatever and then they'll go back and then the MiG 29s come. So that's what's kind of fun about this mission. You can kind of it's kind of like a sandbox where you can go bombing, you can go dogfighting. That's what I kind of enjoy. All right, so we're going to come around. So we're watching for that line. We want to put that line. We're 10 miles from the target now. So we want to come around until that line shows up and we want it basically right in front of us and we want to be leveled out. So, 
close to level. So get that on the front line. And then you see where it says laser arm on top, that means the laser's ready. And then you'll see there's a release queue. This is how, this is the way we bomb modern. So in 17 seconds, 14 seconds it's gonna release. So what you're gonna see is a little, you're gonna see a little line come down and I'm gonna hold the release and it will automatically release them. See that line? So I'm gonna hold it down and it'll automatically drop them. So there goes the bomb. And now watch the target. So the laser will automatically turn on in 20 seconds um, and start lasing that target. And you can see it on this CCD. If I needed to, I can kind of skew it. I can, you know, move it. But I think that looks pretty good. All right, the laser is coming on in seven seconds. Oh yeah, I can see right there, four. So we're right now right over it. The bombs are already on their way. Okay, we're targeting it. And we'll see, we should see an explosion. Impact in two. Time to impact one, boom. There it is. That's, that's so cool. All right, so now, if you look here, there's these little tiny, okay, the, all right, so the plane is, the plane is interfering because it's behind me, that teapot can only look so far behind. So it just blacked out because we went to the gimbal limit of the teapot. So what we're gonna do is turn back around but isn't that cool, Joe? I mean, it's like, it looks just like the footage that you see on TV. I just think that's so awesome. Yeah, I'm still waiting to see the footage. It looks like probably like oh. a 30 second delay. Okay, dang. All right, so now you can see that teapot starting to look at the bottom. It's basically looking at the bottom of the airplane as I come back around. You see the smoke from our bomb. All right, and then we're gonna level out again. Oh shoot, 14 seconds. All right, so we got release in 10 seconds. So I'm gonna drop it. All right, I'm holding the release, see what happens. Bombs away. Now, I we already, oh, whoa, hello VR, whoa. All right, so we wanna hit this thing the VR is doing some weird stuff right now um, so there's a I don't know if you can see it oh shoot I gotta turn the laser back on come on ah this one might be a dud because I lost my little marker he says it's like what uh, make the first ask uh, big 21 and then he says it's it's like watching Storm and Norman do yeah do a briefing it is it is all right so I missed I missed it because you have to rearm the laser and whatever just happened in the VR headset was really not good. So I didn't have the laser rearm. So the laser shuts down after every pass because it, otherwise it'll overheat. But that's okay, we still got more bombs. And we only, let's see, we got, yeah, we got four more bombs. So we only have two more targets. So let me try that again. I got the laser rearm and we'll come back around. What I was gonna show you is you can actually skew it as you're, uh, you know, even after you've dropped the bombs, because the laser will obviously uh, change. Um, that's what was funny, you know, in Maverick, Top Gun 2, Maverick. You saw him as he was pulling the Gs. He was, like, trying to keep the laser on target. It, You see how it's gimbaled. It, it auto-stabilizes. So you don't have to sit there and manually keep that laser on target. That was one of the very few things on Maverick that I was like, oh, come on. But they had a lot of stuff right. They did a lot of really cool things on that movie that they got right from a flight standpoint. So like when they're pulling the over G's, this paddle right here, that's what you use to override the G limit. And that's exactly what they you saw when they pulled it. That's exactly what they did. All right, so now we got time to target. We got 36 seconds. We got a little bit more time this time. So we're gonna level out wings. And with laser guy, it's not nearly as important to be as precise because obviously the bomb steer to the point. So what I want to do now is we want to make sure the laser's on, which it is, and we're going to zoom in a little bit. So we're going to zoom so we can really get in there and see the compound. And so I'm going to hit this one first because I don't want the smoke to overshadow our next run. So we're good. We're set for two bombs. Oh, we're getting low on fuel though. Go figure. Okay, and... Uh, oh crap, did I miss it? I might have missed it. My head was down low. Alright, let's go back again. 
you know, we got got to watch the fuel. Always running out of fuel in this game. Hmm. I know. It's what I do. It's the way it works. It is. We're at 1,400. There is an air base over here, so I think we can make it to that after we do the bombing. All right, so let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can get on target really quick. Let's try to warp around. We got some amazing technology compared to World War II stuff. All right, let's get back on track here. And 26 seconds to release. Try to get level. Uh, laser's still armed. All right, so we good. 10 seconds to release. So I'm gonna hold. I'm holding the release down. Oh, and there it goes. Okay, and now the laser, so we should be good there. Now I think, let me see if I can find the right key. There is a, no, not that. There's a key for the bombs. There they go. So let's watch the bombs, see what they do. Ooh, they look like they're going fast. Let's see, hopefully the laser kicks in. That doesn't look like it fired. Nope, they're gonna miss. Alright, I'm not sure what happened there. Oh, well maybe I, uh, hold on. No? That should have worked. That's weird. Huh, not sure. Alright. Well, we're going to go back to the carrier because we're at a 1,000 pounds of fuel, so <laughs> we, we probably need to boogie on back now. I'd like to go back and bomb it again, but... Yeah, I'm not sure what that was. Why did that? Yeah, it was fused, unless for some reason they didn't... Fu no, they blew up. They just didn't track the laser. And the laser's off now, but it was on. I don't know, guys. Just a weird glitch. Uh, now I need my tack in. Let's go here. So yeah, it takes a while to learn all the systems in these for sure. Um, and we already have the tack in program from last time, so we know we're 40 miles out. Uh, TW asked, is the ground photo map? It looks so real. Uh, no, I think it's all built. I think this is all handcrafted. They actually take the time to build these maps by hand. So it's it's a completely different um, method than uh, they use on uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. So when you get close, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and you saw when we were doing that that uh, buzzing of the city, um, everything's really well handcrafted. So uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you get close to the, um, when you get close to the ground, it's it's pretty obvious that it, uh, yeah, it's all mapped from satellite. Um, let's see, let's get here, kill the, save some gas. Should be able to kind of coast at this point. Um, how come we don't get our tech in showing up? Tech in, let's go out. Uh, where's my tech in at? Thirty miles. I should be up that way. It's only thirty miles. I'm out to eight. Huh? I mean, that's a glitch. I'm not seeing my uh, carrier. I see. I mean, I see a big black dot out there, but we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Maybe I turn the air to ground off. Maybe that's it. Well, we're gonna head out towards the carrier at least. Um, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. I know it. Nothing like not having any fuel and trying to find the carrier. Dodge one one inbound. Uh, that's not what we want to do, but F one. Dodge one one abort inbound resuming mission. Well, it's going down, so we know we're heading the right way. Open comms. F5, F3, 
Got a one. Marshal zero one eight. Mark him up one nine or five. Four three five. Angels one zero point five. Stay one point zero. Yeah, we were low on gas. Um, we'll see. Might be a gliding it in, don't miss kind of thing. Uh -oh. Yeah, it's not looking great. Oh, there it goes. Or it shows me something. Um, there's seven. Okay. So I don't know where it is because I'm not seeing it on my attack on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to request azimuth. So F3. Heading one nine. Okay, so I'm close. So I'm just just under twenty. Question is, will we have the gas for it? <laughs> I'm, I'm cut all the way back on throttle. We're gonna try to. Use, I think it's that dot right in front of me there. So far, I'm seeing seventeen likes on the chat. Oh, nice! I That's didn't even nice. like it this time. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. Um, we definitely can do a few more of them. Okay, we're gonna give her a little gas now. We can't keep idling. We got to give her a little fuel. Um, yeah, if you guys are enjoying this, I'm happy to do this more. Like I said, I can set up some night stuff. I don't know how good the night vision stuff will be or night missions because I don't know how that'll look on the stream. Um, we can try one actually. We can go fly around in Vegas um, and see what it looks like. Um, we also can play Elite Dangerous if you guys like this kind of stuff. If you like to see the motion platform, do you like DCS or do you like seeing the motion platform? Which one do you like better? Because we've got other games that have the motion. I've never seen Elite Dangerous. Oh my goodness. That's one of the coolest, probably one of the coolest um, games with motion. It's pretty good. So the head movement hasn't been too, guy, too bad, guys. I've been... I've been trying to keep it a minimum, but it's really hard when you're dogfighting and stuff not to be whipping around and looking for stuff. So I'm hoping it hasn't been too nauseating. I'm sure. I'm sure Sabrina's like, "Oh hell no, I can't. I can't live with that." She didn't like the Left for Dead or Seven Days to Die stuff. So I know we were whipping the view around pretty hard there when I was dogfighting. You kind of have to, because if you don't, you see all what happens. You kind of get shot. It's going to be close, Joe. We might make it. We're a, we're a third of the way from where we were, and we've got about two-thirds of our gas. And we still got a little altitude that we're working with. What we got? I'm trying to read, I'm trying to read the name. I'm, I'm going to butcher the name. I'm sorry. Uh, Christina Nathan, Wester Fieldheart. Outstanding. Cheers. Uh, Conrad Lawrence, is the motion compensation with the crystal? It's with the index lighthouse. Um, so there's, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, a controller. There's one of these. Whoa, hello. There's one of these on the back of the chair here. And so what it does is it uses the controller on the back of the chair to adjust the view. Hey, look at that. That's where I was wondering where that went. Um, hey, so we've got an average of 46 frames per second. That's pretty good considering uh, how much it's stalled out. Um, and you can see CPU is 62%, GPU is 56, so we're doing okay. Um, I was wondering where that was. That's what I was looking for earlier. It's supposed to be on the back of that controller. So that's how the motion compensation works is it basically... Um, uses that controller. The crystal, you can do it. The problem with using a crystal for a controller for motion compensation is it has to be in view of it because it uses the cameras. And I tried it just to see what it was like, and it would it would glitch out a lot. Like, if you moved your head too much, you were constantly... Like how you saw me slide in and out of the cockpit a minute ago, it would do that, like, far more often. So the index controllers or the, you know, the lighthouse controllers seem to be the best solution for motion compensation in my opinion now we're talking about for an h6 which is six degrees of motion if you only have an h2 or an h3 you can totally use the whip motion because that's a lot easier 
but an it, the whip motion sensor does not track the six degrees of freedom that the H6 can do. So that's why you have to go to this other method. And there's a whole slew of problems that that it brings in. <laughs> um, and uh, man, we're at 420. Woo, boy, we are running low on the gas. Um, so, and I am doing, I'm working on a video I've been working on for about six months now. I'm still trying to, I'm having trouble with it working in OpenXR. So I'm going to try one more thing. I actually just ordered a new controller that's a new modern one. I'm going to see if I can get it to work with that because I really want to cover both Steam uh, VR and OpenXR implementation, but I haven't been able to get the OpenXR to work with this controller. So that's really what the hang-up's being, been because I, really um, I really want to get that going. So, oh, wait, where's... That's the boat. Front. That's not the ship. Oh, Front 300. Right Neat. Finally, a use for my old Vive controller. That's exactly why I used mine. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. why I did that. Absolutely. T Dub says, uh, "Looks smoother than 40 frames per second." Yeah, I think we had a lot of when I was dropping. I was getting like 10 frames a second. So, typically in this, I get like about 63. And keep in mind, so right now it's 51. Keep in mind, I'm also recording on the same computer. Um, when I'm flying it without anything, I'm usually between 63 and 70 to 73 frames when I'm not recording and stuff. Ooh, so, boy. 300. Field hard? Uh -huh. So when you push on and suddenly release the rudder, does the nose bounce when you let go or, to remain, or does it remain on heading? Uh, all right, I'm going to try it. I think it comes back, but let's try it. That kind of works back. I think I'm off a little bit. But, <clears throat> sorry, I don't want to do too much to kill my speed because, as you can see, we have 290 pounds. <laughs> and we're still four miles from... So this is going to be a one-shot one. i got to stop on this deck no matter what. <laughs> so, because I do not have the gas to go around again. Uh, Foxy asks, what's the newest motion platform? Is it the H6 or is there a newer one? Uh, they keep making versions of the H6, so they're constantly making better versions of it. But there's not a new one per se. It's just a, a newer model of it. It's kind of like buying a Camaro. There's always a newer model or a Corvette. It's kind of the same thing uh, that they kind of do. This is not good, guys. 2.30. Oh, boy. Ah. He says the H6 is the latest and greatest of the DOF reality. Yeah. They always, they're always iterating. And if you're interested in one, give it a little bit of time because if you're into flight, because there's a cogging issue that a lot of people have. I, it doesn't bother me um, because I run that transducer, but they're working on it. So I think there might be a new configuration with a new gearbox probably by the, I'm going to say, summer, into summer. They're prototyping it now, and if it works, I'd imagine it'll probably be in their units. They'll integrate it. I'm guessing before the holidays or something, but I'm just guessing on that. All right, I can't really see the boat through the line, so I'm going to turn down the HUD. There we go. Oh, Joe. Joe, i got to get my stuff down. I've tried to keep all my stuff up as long as I could, but i got to get... i got to get... i got to get in landing configuration here, and i got to put the gear down. Oh, well, I, I was trying to keep me... I was trying to keep as clean as I could... Oh, we might have lost Joe right at the most critical time. All right, guys. Mm, boy. Let's see if I can get this. Off and on. I can't. I don't have the gas to wave off. Down, down, down. Oh, no. Oh, I don't think we can make it. 120. Oh, boy. E all right, I'll try to get around 90. There's no way. There's no way I'm going to make it around. I should have just nosed it. it. Shoot. It says, does the motion rig register buffer buffeting? It all depends. It all depends on the game. In this, yes. So the motion platform doesn't... All it does is respond to 30. Oh, my gosh. We're going to run out of gas, guys. I'm going to need that helicopter like Adrian said. I can't get around. There it is. We're out. All right. Well, at least we don't have. We can swim there. 
All right, so let's see if we can set it down. Oh boy! Yee! Oh. Hey, we're in the water. <laughs> uh oh! I just I just saw the first pass on the carrier right now. Yeah, not good. It wasn't good. Not good at all. It's not good. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so future Mark on the stream now is saying, "Wow, this is not a good thing." <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I tried. Um, <laughs> that was kind of cool. All right. I got to show T-Dub. He was asking me about the wire. So, um, or actually, I think, I don't think we looked at that. That was the last time. Let's see, was this? Oh, no, I landed and refueled. Didn't, or no. No, we had to restart the stream. That's right. So I did catch that three wire. You can watch the live stream again. Uh, on that earlier landing, I did make the actually the light. Oh, wait, no, there it is. There it is. This is when we landed. Man, we've been flying this one for a while. So, see, there we go. That's me. Three wire right there. Wire number three. Wow, we flew for a while. When did we start this? This mission started... Your channel timed out. 5.30. Wow, yeah. Okay, so about an hour. That was about an hour flight. Oh, pilot's dead. Now... Yeah. What are you going to do? No, we're, we're dropping lots of connections here. Yeah. Are, are we still... Just, is it me or... It is like, everybody else doing okay like, or is it just Joe? Mine said connection lost on my headset, so it could be a me thing, but I'm still seeing the stream. Everybody else getting a stream? Okay. Oh, Max Drift has entered the chat and says, <laughs> are you too far away to pedal? <laughs> I can swim. I can swim. <laughs> Dang it. Um... Do you guys, all right, what do you guys want to see? Uh, I don't even know what time it is. I have no idea. That's the problem in VR. Six, I've got 6.30 my time to be 5.30. So about 5.30. Time. All right, we can do one more thing then. Um, do we want... Uh, I got a storm. I got a stormy takeoff, which yeah, there's no way to land it on a carrier. Um, or do you want to see some night? We could do a night one if you guys are interested in the night flight stuff. Um, I'm okay. trying to see if I... T-Dub says, do a transformation dust to dark, showing the ground uh, lit up. Uh, then uh, T-Dub says it's stuttering. Uh, Conrad Lawrence says it's good here. And Foxy Angel says the stream is good. Okay. Um, I don't have one set up that's a, that it's at sunset other than that one we played earlier. Um, so if you want nighttime, I'd have to, I'd have to change... I'd have to set one up. So I don't have that. I have night. I have one that we can fly at night. Um, so I've got Nevada at night. So it'd be in Vegas. We could go Bonsai Vegas. Um, I'm trying to think if I've got any other ones. I got a refuel one. I haven't done that in a while. Um, I've got a refuel mission. If you want to see me try to refuel. So refuel or nighttime flight? What do we? What do you guys want to see? Pick one of those two. So we can either do a nighttime or we can do a attempt at refueling. I don't think I have. I'm trying uh, to think. Foxy says night. T Dub. Uh, oh, uh, Foxy's giving T Dub some advice. Says T Dub, refresh YouTube if the stream is buffering. So again, back to before I got so rudely interrupted by running out of gas. So, th so the motion platform only reads the telemetry from the game. So it's highly dependent on how well they program the telemetry in the game as to how good the motion is on the flight sim um, or any sim. So what's cool about this one is that um, in DCS, you saw that even when I was like hooking up to the shuttle on the carrier, it, there's telemetry for that. You feel it bump. There's times when I've like flown really close to a building and I've actually got wind wake up off the building and it's like made the plane do some weird stuff. Um, I've had in a dogfight when head to head and a guy flew right by me and I went right through his jet stream, you know, and, and felt it buff it. So it, it is all dependent on how well the programmers program their games um, as to what many, how many, you know, sensations you're going to get. The one that's, thing that's really cool about a DOF reality and more specifically an SRS system, because basically DOF makes the rig and all the physics that move, you know, the motors and the arms and the whole physical rig. But they're partnered with Sim Racing Studio, SRS, who are the ones that actually interpret that game logic 
and tell the platform how to move. So they're kind of the intermediary between the game and the motion on the platform. And what's really cool is Sim Racing Studio has the ability, if you have a game that has no telemetry at all, for example, Star Wars Squadrons, which is one of my favorites, and it absolutely sends zero telemetry. They did not program any telemetry into that game. Well, I can turn on a uh, joystick emulator. No, it doesn't have all the, the extras like, you know, uh, uh, buffeting or, you know, filling the ground or anything. But what it allows me to do is, as I move the stick, it will actually move the uh, platform. In fact, uh, let me, while they're trying to decide, let me show you real quick. Let me see. I don't know if I can or not, but we'll try here. Um, if I crash the stream, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> we'll see. So what I'm doing is, um, where is my, I need this, uh, if I can get to it, if it'll let me, there it is. So can you see this, Joe? I'm not sure if you can see it, hopefully. Um, this, is, this is the SRS window right here, and um, if I come over here and I go to um, Joystick, and you have to have the paid premium subscription for this to work. But if I turn this on, now if I move the stick, oh, hold on. I don't know if, let's see, I gotta go. Hopefully it'll work this way, yeah. Um, oh, it can't because it's reading DCS. But basically what you can see here is as I move this stick, you can see everything moving. If I wasn't in DCS right now, um, it would actually be moving the platform. So even if you're in a game that doesn't have any uh, telemetry, you could still get the motion from the, from a game, albeit it's limited, but you at least get it. And so even in, in X-Wing, in Star Wars Squadrons, I absolutely still get to use motion in it, and it's just really, really cool. So that's kind of how that works. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, all right, what was the final vote there, Joe? Did I lose you, buddy? You still there? No, I'm here. The uh, Apparently there's some stuttering going on with the streaming. People are kind of refreshing their YouTube. That might have been uh, me going into that screen because that seems to make it wonky. T-Dub said he was getting distorted audio. And then uh, now Tim Focke said no sound at all. Sound is back. So, yeah, it's because uh, I was in the other there. screen. They were saying something about do night, do something at night, night run okay. or some kind of night, night, okay. night mission or something. All right, we'll do that. Load her up. You guys can tell me how this looks on the stream. I need to do a night carrier landing, but I still need a little more practice at night carrier landings. Um, I have done them, but it's really tough. I try to do them, practice them at sunset, so it's just getting dusk, because then you still at least have a sense of. Where everything is. The problem is when it's pitch black out there, you don't have a sense of the um, the ground. I mean, it's you got to be really focused on instruments. So, uh, okay. So this is just. There's no fighting in this. We're just in Vegas. So we're gonna start at Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas. Ooh, I got a distorted screen right now. Wow. My eyes are going wonk a little wonky here. I'm probably due for another memory leak. Just getting close. Yeah, it feels like it is. So what's for dinner on your end tonight, Mark? I don't know. <laughs> Since Sabrina won't tell us what she's doing for dinner tonight. Last night we had Brenda made Zupa soup, which is amazing. Whoa, okay, we're moving. Hello. Oh, it's because I crashed in the water. Whenever you crash, I'll give you a heads up. Usually as soon as you restart the game, you end up in bad situations. All right, so we are on the airstrip at Nellis, and I don't know how dark this is going to look for you guys. Um, I can see the city lights pretty well. Um, obviously the cockpit. Heat up says you need to finish with a uh, finish with a carrier landing in f in full on stormy sea. 
I'll at try night. it. At night? I don't have that set up. And, <laughs> but I can show you a stormy landing. There's, it's impossible, basically. That Well, I shouldn't say it's impossible, but I've tried, and there's so much wind. Even landing on an airfield was rough. So we'll go do a quick bonsai of Vegas, and then we'll end the stream. We'll go into that storm. So, All right, so here we are. We're on the ground at Nellis. Um, and we're just going to take off and go to Vegas. So, all right. So we should be pretty much ready to go. I think we're on the on the field ready. So there we go. It's so cool because you can feel the rumble on the the ground. Like you could feel it feels like you're on the runway, and then when you take off, that all kind of goes away. So we're gonna rotate. Okay, and we're going to pull the gear up and that, so you can see we're, there we go. So I don't know how well that looks on the stream. Um, so real quick, let's go this way. So I'll give you a little tour real quick. There we are. Are we disconnected? Yeah, the stream glitched for a second. It did a spinny circle, and then it, we disconnected for a second. But we're back? We're back right now. All right. So this is Nellis uh, Air Force Base. And let's see. I'm trying to remember. See, I'm going to see you now lift off the uh, runway. Okay. Perfect. Give you an idea of the lag. Wow, that is a lot of lag. All it's right. close to a minute, a minute ago. Jeez. So it's kind of neat flying at night. I I really enjoy night flying. It's the Pimax gives you a good um, a good view. It's not as good as OLED, obviously, but it's better than the Quest Three. That is the one thing. The Quest Three has a ton of glare and all that stuff. So, uh oh, uh oh. Now I'm glitching. There we go. Foxy says, not time was cool. Yeah, and look at that full moon just hanging out. So here you go. Just a little... Kind of head on down the strip here. MGM... New York, New York. There's the Luxor. We'll go. We'll go up. Let's see, we're right over it. We're inverted right now. Woo! I just caught the glitch. You have a second on the street. Huh. All right. Coming in hot. <laughs> so you see, everything looks pretty cool. Let's see if I can invert. Fly a little upside down. I'm inverted. And then what's really cool, let's get over here, let's show you the outside view. This is, uh, this is kind of cool here, so let me go to the outside view, you guys will like this. Here's a flyby, and then watch this, get the strip in the background. Here we go with afterburner. Watch them kick in. <laughs> Tell me that's not cool as hell. Caesar's Palace. It's like I'm flying a drone or something. Anyways, yeah, let's go back in. All right, so let's, 
I'm just going to put this down and we'll do a carrier storm takeoff. So if you watch my other live streams, I don't like just quitting. I, I like the immersion of actually <laughs> feeling like I need to put it back on the ground. All right. Yeah, the afterburner rings are pretty sweet looking. Yeah. I usually don't ever get an outside view because, again, I'm all about realism, but uh, for the live stream, it's kind of cool to show you guys that. It's so cool. I love flying at night. Like I said, OLED is the most magical because when it's pitch black, it's pitch black. But the crystal does a pretty good job. If you uh, set the backlighting to just be at like I think it's like point oh one or something, it, it gives you it gets rid of that ghosting effect, and um, it's it's not a bad experience. This is pretty cool. Come on, baby. Set her down, nice and easy. Oh, you're gonna run out of airspace here if you. Keep this up, Joe. Oh, uh -oh. there we go. We're down. I'm like, we should be touching down here in a second. So yeah, there's the city. There's the airport. So does this look okay on the live stream? It's not too bad, or is? It, I, think I guess it looks it's pretty decent. Okay, I think cool. It looks pretty decent. The uh, I, I like I said, it's delayed. I'm just getting you lining up on your final right now, so yeah, okay. I kind of got to get caught up, but yeah, I think I think I think the visuals on this look nice, probably because of you know the so Vegas many city lights. lights. Yeah, so yeah. Many city lights, you know, make it nice. All right, I'm gonna taxi off, and then we'll load the other one. I think this is. I think I can taxi here. Woo! Whoa! 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 That's got a little goosey. I think I uh, spun the tires out a little bit on that. Eh, nah, this oh. is good enough. We're the military. We park where we want. It's close <laughs> enough for government work. Close enough. So there you go. That's the. That's Vegas. It's kind of cool. And there's the plane. So, all right. Do so you want to see a storm? Okay. <laughs> Let's try it. So Foxy, this Foxy gets looks, nuts. Right? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, T-Dep says it looks very black on screen. Yeah, <laughs> it's nighttime. That's why I wasn't sure how that would look. <laughs> well, sometimes I notice that YouTube, YouTube will do. You have to check your uh, your uh, streaming rate because YouTube will automatically bump you down. Like if you're streaming at 1080p, oh. it'll bump you down to like 480. And when they do that, then you get a lot of pixelation on the black squares because well yeah it saves them data streaming that makes a lot of sense all right i haven't yeah, flown this in a while uh, this will be our last one i think and it's probably getting late so um there you go but i'm glad you guys like it see here's the proper way you're supposed to do a carrier i do this to remind myself this is how you're supposed to do them so um there's no chance i'm going to be able to land back on the carrier and, uh, and you'll see why in a second. So this is this is serious storms. I can't remember what I got said at, but this is basically like typhoon weather, like like hurricane. This is crazy. So we'll see how it looks. I haven't been in here in a while actually, and it'll be interesting to see what the flame with the uh, yeah. There's your seas. I don't know if you can see that teed up, but it is it's a storm a brewing. So, um, I haven't looked at this too. Let's see. See how this looks. Yeah, yeah, it's taking a hit on the FPS for sure. There's a lot going on, but we'll try it. We'll run that, run that 4090, push it hard. All right. So this is a storm, as you can see. Um, <laughs> it's a little nutty. We are hooked at the catapult. You can see the waves like crazy, and we're gonna we're gonna do a little launch. So I guess let's take a look at the outside too. You can see all the. This looks cool with the rain on the canopy. This looks pretty awesome. So you can see here we go. 
She's raining. Looks like the boat's doing pretty good, though. It's still powering through. All right. And we're connected. You're back. But the we're stream's back. still up, right? It looks like it is stuttering. Okay. All right. Yeah, it was pretty bad on the load. All right, so let's let's do this. Salute. <laughs> oh man. It's raining, Joe. It's raining. Salute. All right. Here we go, guys. Ugh. Woo. I can't even see the ship anymore. So... We are in the thick of a storm, but this is one of the coolest things about flying. So we're gonna, we're basically going vertical. We're trying to climb out 2,000, 3,000 feet, 3,500 feet. Still got rain. Yep. Man, there's a lot of... There you go. Boom. That is so magical to me. When you are in just cloud or, you know, storm and then all of a sudden blue skies. So it's a bit of a weather front here, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, T-Dub asked, did the seas uh, go any more extreme? Uh, I don't know. They're pretty extreme. I don't know if it moves the boat. It doesn't look like the deck is actually being affected by the pitching seas. So that would be kind of cool. But the wind's so strong. I mean, I'll go back and try to land on the carrier. But the wind's so strong, It's I don't know how you would ever do it. Obviously, I think if you were on the carrier, they would they would turn the carrier into a headwind and I think it's a crosswind in this but I'm not sure but isn't this I mean Joe this is this is why I love flight stimming I I, I just oh. I, I mean it's so cool you know you're out here and you know it's like flying on among the clouds there we go. Uh. See, 10 toes up, 747. Uh, you and the server, yes, or they ask? No. And then, uh, nope. okay. nah, just, and just Foxy, me. Foxy says, I guess he wants the ship to be bobbing up and down. I, it would be cool if it did because the actual pilots have to do that. I mean, they actually do have to land in stormy seas. So, all right, let me see if I can find this ship and try to land. I mean, this is this is gonna not go well. <laughs> I'm just telling you right up front, this is not gonna go well. I've tried it. And again, there's so much um, so much crosswind, it's like it's not attack and on enter. There it is. Alright. So I'm fourteen miles, let's see. I don't wanna dive back down into that soup, Joe. <laughs> I like the sun. I've yeah, enjoyed it up you. here. <laughs> it's pretty looking wanna... up there. Look at that. It is. It's so pretty. Um, but T what T Dub wants, T Dub gets. So let's get down into it. Let's see how our frame rate. It should be much improved up here. Yeah, 45, 52. So yeah, it's gonna go away when we <laughs> when we go down. All right, so the carrier's kind of down below me. Um, I better hit this ILS.
Better turn on the ILS. I'm going to need all the help I can get. Um, I guess we'll call inbound. Open comms. F5. F2. F1. Dancing in the clouds. Ah, oh, it's beautiful, man. BRC is 277 2835. Okay, Barge ready. Wow. So we're doing a case two recovery, which is, uh, there's a lot more to it than that. I don't know all the rules for a case two. So we're just going to go in. And we're going to say F2. So this is more in line with what you do at a night night landing, which I, I don't know all the rules for it. F2. F2. They've done a great job on three job at Well, thank you. Man. Uh, all right, going down into the soup. Wasn't that Sabrina who programmed all the new cloud updates? I, I think so. I think in her spare time, away from seven days. Right? My HSI up here. Seeing it's getting dark, so we need to put some lights on. Because I can't see. Oh, hey, wow. Sun! Uh, it's still raining. We got... We actually got ground. I can see the ground. So, anyways, you're going to see the wind effect on the plane when I'm trying to land. I'm, I mean, yeah. We'll try it. It's cool. I don't know if you can hear it on the stream, but you can hear the rain on the canopy. Really cool. Let's see if I can work. Oh, I see land now. Yep. I can't even see. Just going off of. Man. It's crazy. All right. I'm going to leave, I think I'm going to leave the flaps up for this because, I don't know, I think you're just inducing more wind issues. With the flaps? Maybe go, maybe go half. Well, I'm just worried the gusts are going to make the, make it even more unstable. Well, I mean, we'll try it. I guess we'll find out. I think the flaps help you with your speed though, right? Well, yeah, they do. But I'm worried there. I mean, yeah. Oh man, yeah. I'm, so it's it's tossing me. Wow. I don't know if you guys can see it on stream, but it's definitely pitching the plane around, like, like so, like I'm full stick forward right now, and I can't get nose authority on it. And that's what I was worried about with the flaps. I'm, I think they're just too. I think it's too windy out here for him. Let's go to half and see what that does. And anybody see a carrier? <laughs> carrier? What? Wouldn't that be? Should be a carrier out here somewhere. Edep says that water looks brown. Uh, yeah, that water did. That was uh, dirt. <laughs> uh. We actually had some sun coming through. Holy crap, Joe. <laughs> this is stupid. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm watching the uh, motion platform. Yeah. I mean, I can just... It, it's making real subtle little... Little motions. Oh, there! I see a green light. All right, I see a, I see a light flashing. We're five miles out. 
Hook down, gear down, flaps at half. Oh, my gear's probably jacked up. I was going too, too fast trying to keep some authority on here. I probably broke the wheels again. Although it's not beeping at me, so that might be... Oh, wow. Do we have a break in the storm? Like, can I actually... Maybe... Actually... Maybe? I'm coming in way too fast. Oh. Way too fast. See, I can't... I can't get it... I, see, I'm, I'm like... I mean, I've got full stick and I can't keep it on the glide slope. I don't know if you saw that. That's the problem. I can't keep it on the glide slope. It's just pushing the plane. I have to steer into the ship so hard. But we'll try it again. It's just pushing the aircraft to the side so hard. There's a destroyer. Man. It feels like I'm in a storm. <laughs> I can't even see the carrier anymore. It should be right to the side of me. There it is. Yeah, there it is. You ever see that movie, The Final Countdown? <laughs> uh, All right. Really need to get... I'm just showing you your approach to the carrier right now. Yeah, you'll see. It's just the wind is so strong. Ah, uh, it's you like off. you can't. Yeah, you can't line up. That's what I was telling T Dub. It's like you just. You just can't. There's too much wind. And maybe if the carrier was flying into the wind, or driving into the wind, maybe? But with a crosswind, it's just like... Well, they're supposed to turn into the wind, technically. Yeah, so I, and that's, that's on me, because I'm the one that set it up. Uh, T-Dub says, all I saw was a pass in Mach 2. I, I got it. I'm on the carrier. <laughs> all right, what? Well, nice. Nice. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> uh, uh, T-Dub says you've hit a patch of fine weather. Uh, Westerfield Hart says trim it up. Uh, Foxy <laughs> says T-Dub. Uh, that was the eye of the storm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, we'll let uh, you guys Westerfield watch it. Hart says carrier should be into the wind. And then uh, T-Dub says Kurt Douglas, great movie. Talking yep. about final countdown yep oh so we're gonna try um i don't know if, i don't know what you saw on the stream yet but i got it on the carrier deck i did hit the deck well that counts for something right <laughs> salute <laughs> salute <laughs> we're gonna go try an airfield just oh, to show you how crazy oh oh, <laughs> oh okay <laughs> I hit the deck. There was, there was clarification <laughs> in that meeting. I got you. <laughs> All right. Ouch. Yeah. What we're going to do, real quick, open map. Jacob says you've sunk my battleship. <laughs> open map. Wester Fieldheart says enough hearts to send out to sea. Yep. Okay. So I need to be heading there. F1. All right. I'm going to go see if I... The question is, can I land it even on a long airstrip? I got my map here. Let's see if I can find the... Should be a airstrip over on this island. Man, it's rough weather out here. Open map. F1. All right. So let's see if I can actually get this thing down. Wow, that's it's almost enough to make you seasick. Holy crap! 
it's real subtle, but man, you get these little bursts that move you around. It's kind of wild. All right, so there should be an airstrip somewhere over here. Let's see if we can find it. I'm not really familiar with this part of the map, so bear with me while I look for an airstrip. That looks like an airstrip, doesn't it? Can you turn the lights on, guys, please? All right. I think they are. Motel 6? Yeah. Leave the light on for me, would you? All right, let's see what happens here. I'm going to see if I can land it on an actual stationary piece of ground. Let's see if that's even doable. That'll really show you, showcase the uh, wind effect. All right. Mr. Field Martin says, and hand grenades. Back to the previous. <laughs> Uh, P-Dub says, have you ever put down with no undercarriage? Yeah. Yep. I actually actually blew the back end of my, of my F-14 off. I dropped a bomb a little too low. Um, I blew the, the tail hook off. I actually got it stopped on the carrier. I still had, I think I still had the front gear. Actually, I think I had the gear. The gear was still there. But I, I actually came in as slow as I could, slid to a stop on the carrier deck because my tail hook had been blown off of the plane. So, all right, let's see what we got here. Where's that runway? That's a road, that's not a runway. We need a runway. All right, so. So you can see how far I have to drive into, into the, the wind. Apparently the other controller is low. Come on. Maybe, maybe. Come on. Come on. Oh boy. Oh, that was a little rough, but. Oh, come on. We're in the sand. Woo, doggy. We're okay. We're okay. Don't mind that. Fire. It's fine. <laughs> It's it's fine. It's fine. Uh, We're good. <laughs> are you good? We're good. We're fine. I don't know what you're worried about. <laughs> Western Fieldheart says barricade model. Uh, no, they don't have the barricade. See, I think she'll still fly. Actually, I think she'll be just fine. I don't know. I'm seeing approach over the ground right now. I got to get caught up. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm trying not to spoil oh, it. Runway. Yeah, we got this. There's a runway, I, yeah. I don't think she's going to fly. Let's see. Oh, she still drives. I think can, can she fly? Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no. We're fine. Oh, oh. We're fine, Joe. We're going to oh. see if she still flies. Oh, she might. What, what, oh, no, what is this? Did you bring marshmallows? Oh, oh, oh. oh my god. I, I think there's something wrong with it. I think oh this is not good. Oh. Eject, eh. eject. Yeah, ejected. Yeah, ejected right 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 into the ground. Now I got the wind blowing in my face because I hit the ejection. <laughs> yeah. 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 Salvageable. Hey, I'm, I'm impressed that the uh, the gear you didn't break off. Oh wait, it gets better. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got I got I, got, I had to see if it would fly. <laughs> it oh, looked like okay. it was still airworthy. <laughs> so I got yeah. the wind going, guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay, now you're back on the runway here. <laughs> Oh no, that's bad. That's real bad. Oh, that's real bad. Yeah. Mark. Oh, Mark, you did. Oh, Mark. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It wasn't great. <laughs> yeah. Man. You know, you got to go for it. I thought it's a lot half a wing. <laughs> so, you'll see here the pilot has died. I ejected straight into the ground. <laughs> so don't eject when you're inverted. 
20 yeah, feet from the ground. And on the runway? Yeah, that's a bad idea. <laughs> Should have. Uh, yeah, that's a bad idea. That was a bad idea. So, anyways, on that note, I think that's a good place to end it. I mean, probably not, but, you know. <laughs> well, I think. We've run the board here. We've done quite a bit. Well, we've been doing this here for what? I don't know. Let's do it. I don't even know. I've been in VR. I can't even tell. I don't even know if it's dark outside yet. Set. Seven o'clock my time, so okay, so four hours. That's about over. That's about right. Yeah, we usually do three to four hours. All right. Yeah. All right. So before we leave, so you guys, would you guys like to see more DCS or flight simulator style games? That's my first question to ask you guys. Um, what'd you think of this? Anything I can do other than not crash? The, well, not crash the plane, but find a way that the uh, the program doesn't crash all the time. That's on my to do list. And, uh, yeah, just kind of give me your thoughts. And if you want to see more of this, we can probably make it happen. Yeah. We need to find what a way you think, Joe? virtual marshmallows and hot dogs. That's what we need to do. <laughs> or quit catching the plane on fire. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, and big long sticks. Yeah. Really long sticks. Really long sticks. So what's really cool, Joe, once you get up and going, we can actually, Jeff, you know, Weaver, me, you, we could all be flying in a mission together. We could all be doing oh, this be kind awesome. of stuff. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it with one other uh, team. I got a group called the West Coast Hornets that have graciously allowed me to fly with them, even though I'm nowhere near as good. And some of them are former F-18 pilots, so they've helped me, you know, taught me little tricks and stuff. But um, nice. it's cool when you're flying. I will tell you one of the coolest experiences I had because I'd done a lot of solar player stuff um, just by myself. But I was flying with three other guys. We we had four of us, and uh, we had to go tank off of a tanker. And talk about not wanting to embarrass myself. It's like, oh, my God, I've got three other guys watching me now, flying with me. You know, they're, we're all in formation. And I actually got up to that tanker, and I tanked on it. Um, and then you know, one of my uh, co-pilots was, was tanking on the other side. And it was just this cool experience knowing that we were real people. We were talking over comms, and we're tanking at the same time. And I actually have a screenshot of it. It's one of my favorite screenshots. In case, and despite the fact it never really happened in real life, it still was one of those moments. It's like, that is a cool moment for me. So um, it was kind of neat. Uh Foxy, back to chat, says, ouch. t Dub said, words escape me. Uh, Lester Field <laughs> says, cheers. t Dub says, cheers, Mark. I'm seeing uh, Joe. Thank you, t Dub. Yeah. Uh, yes. says, do you have IL-2? I do. I do have IL-2. Uh, there's a yeah. couple videos on the channel, but if that's something you guys would like to watch, that one, that's World War II stuff. Um, we certainly could do some fight um, streaming, uh, live streaming with IL-2 if, if you guys are interested. That's a great suggestion. Um. Uh, T-Dub says, I like the DCS stuff. Wester Hartfield, let's uh, reverse engineer it. Uh, Foxy, uh, oh, Foxy says, Joe's great on the MC. Thank you, Foxy. That's awfully kind of you to say. Yes, you did a great job, Joe. Thank you so much for helping. Because, again, I can't do this. I, I, I have no way to see what the chat's doing. So I couldn't do this without you, Joe. It's very, very gracious of you to be willing to donate your time on Sunday to just t- <laughs> tell me what people are typing. So thank you. All right. I think we lost Joe. Just had it. There he is. He's gone. All right. Well, if you guys like it, um, Joe will be back, I'm sure, in a minute. Um, so, yeah, in the chat, let me know. Do you, you want more DCS? Do you want some Elite Dangerous? Uh, do you, IL-2 is a great idea. I think that might be something we could look at doing. Um, i trying to think what else is good. We've got Racing Sims, too. I don't know if you guys are into racing. I'm back. Yep. So, I, mean, I hope you heard. Internet's. Yeah, you might get inflated. I hope you, you heard all the congratulatory stuff I gave you. So if uh, not, I can repeat it. No, yeah, I heard some real nice words. So I okay. heard you start it, so I appreciate all the nice it was, things. It was epic. You can go back and watch it in the last stream replay. I, I, <laughs> so, I will. I like it. So uh, I just asked everybody. Yeah, no doubt. Between my the game crashing or the, the uh, program crashing all the time, and although it hasn't crashed, I, I keep waiting for it to crash, and it hasn't crashed lately. So maybe maybe whatever that was, it's it's good now. But um. Yeah, I, so I was asking the guys if what specifically. I think IL-2 is a great idea. Um, I would love to do some Elite Dangerous. Uh, that's a great, that's a fun fun one, too. I love DCS. So I'm having to do this. We can do Microsoft Flight Simulator, too. But, gosh, everybody in their dog does that. Although it might be fun to do a little Microsoft Flight Sim um, with some of the mods, like the Top Gun mod, where we do some of those challenges. Uh, there's that Dune mod. So we, we could even do some of that. So um, kind of let me know in the chat what you're leaning towards, and we'll see if we can schedule some of this in. Because I had a great time today. I really did. Westerfield Hearts says, join us in FW3.1 as well. I don't know if you caught that earlier. If I have to no, I didn't. Cut out. Okay, uh, how many, and the DW asked, how uh, can you fly, uh, how many, how many can you fly, oh, excuse me, how many can you have flying uh, in a squadron? I don't know what the limit is. I know, 
I think it depends on how strong the server is. I know the game has been optimized now. I imagine, I think the big missions, like people do like big missions where they're flying uh, against each other and stuff. I think you can get like 32 or 16 to 32, I think. But I don't, I don't know for sure. So I, I think I've heard of, you know, the servers get real laggy or can. Um, so you got to find that balance of where a good number is versus how laggy the servers get. But I think with the optimizations that they've been making, I think it's allowing us to get more. Don't quote me on that because I don't do a lot of multiplayer in this. Um, but yeah, I, I think you can get quite a few. Westerfield Heart says one hundred. says one hundreds in a FW. Uh, Westerfield okay. Heart says uh, Pacific Fighters IL two, and uh, T Dub says Elite Dangerous Yes and Racing. Uh, okay. Uh, Westerfield Heart says thanks, fellas. And then uh, Foxy saying buffering on and off. Westerfield Heart says uh, combat uh, introduced yet. And Nadrak, Nadrak, N A D R A K. Uh, DCS tutorials include. The DOF slash crystal and curves for uh, formation tanking. Wow, curves for formation tanking. Uh, don't run into the tanker. That's my curve. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am not good at the right way to do this stuff. Um, yeah, and there's there's a lot of really good tutorials out here. Wags obviously does a lot. Uh, Matt Wagner, who does a lot, he works with uh, Eagle Dynamics. Um, so he does some great tutorials, and there's some other people out there, uh, Growling Sidewinder, I think, and uh, a few others that do some really good tutorials. That's what I've watched to learn. I, I am not a good person to learn from because I kind of do shortcuts and stuff. I kind of play for fun more than anything. But, you know, I think I think there's far more qualified people than me for tutorials on, on this stuff. But, um, yeah, so that's cool. That's really cool. Um, and then, yeah, we get Jeff in here. He wants to do the Apache. So, you know, he and I theoretically can fly in the same helicopter and um, – you know, with the motion platform fill the same stuff, so that's kind of cool too. So um, yeah, we'll we'll keep looking at doing some more of this, and um, yeah, just give me a post. I'm glad you guys appreciate you all hanging out for all this length of time, and I'm glad it was entertaining. Again, I apologize for the technical difficulties, but yeah, first time we ran this, and obviously we're sorting that stuff out. So um, Joe, anything else you want to cover? Or talk about uh, Angel? Uh, thank you. Yeah, Foxy basically says, "Hey, I gotta get, uh, I gotta get." So I uh, see y'all Wednesday, and he says, "Get your game on." Thanks, uh, thanks, Foxy. T-Dub says, "Spud Knocker," and Nadrex says, "LOL." Spud knocker, yep. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Um, I will work on getting this better as we move on. And I am going to kill the stream now, so I don't know what's going to happen lag-wise. But I appreciate you guys watching. Let me see if I can actually get out to that screen. I wish the, the big thing I have trouble with is, like, every time I go to the desktop, it gets wonky. Um, so... You're probably getting stutter. Um, so, yeah. All right. Let me... You know what? I, I probably just need to, to do this. All right. So, Joe, we're going to attempt to do our ending here. All right. <laughs> so, we'll give it a shot. Th thanks, everybody. Appreciate you watching. And until uh, next uh, what, time... Wait, wait, oh, hang, hang on. Okay. West, Wester, Wester Field Heart says, what time on Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday is uh, 3.30. So, it's and we will... 3.30 Mountain Time. Mountain time. And it's in the description. If you're curious, um, they're in the description. If you're interested, if you're interested to go to the live tab, um, we've got a ton of gameplay. Uh, I actually have some IL-2 